And here we go. <laughs> I shouldn't be surprised by this. I'm the one to press the button. Welcome to another episode of Legends of the Drowned Isles Campaign to the Great Confusion. I am the host and GM of this 5th Ed D&D homebrew campaign. I'm Mark the Encaffeinated One, but very happy to be joined by my players because without them, it would just be me kind of spouting off lore of my own world, which would be actually kind of fun, but not nearly as much fun as playing for my players. So welcome to my players, starting on my left with Pat. Hi, my name is Pat. I'm playing Silas Marsh, uh, Party Crasher. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Marie, and I'm playing Annie. Hey, and I'm Nax, and I'm playing Medric, half-orc cleric, who looks super fabulous right now. And Medric was actually invited. Yeah. <laughs> Annie is a plus one, and indeed, uh, Silas is crashing the building. Um, yes. Yeah, so Hopefully we not are, literally, well, but I have doubts. We'll, we'll see. You know, the night is young, as they say. Uh, we begin, uh, with, however, in the midst of that party. This is a party thrown by the Baron and Baroness to sort of welcome people back to their their graces, I guess you might say, after a, a fairly long absence. The Baroness was sick for a very long time, and the Baron wasn't admitting anyone into the house. It had grown somewhat uh, desolate and dour, and the few times that the the uh, group had uh, visited the Barony, which I I actually may have only been once. It was um, in a very creepy state, but perhaps to throw off any of those rumors or perhaps to just return to business as normal, the Baron and Baroness opened up their home for a massive masquerade ball, inviting a veritable who's who of the local area. Amongst the people uh, brought in was, of course, the Phoenix Champion, a local, well, now a local hero, uh, a... Uh, member of the, the uh, Temple of Ignis, and is taking up the mantle of trying to protect this small town from all sorts of nasties which have come up. At least if you believe half of the stories and songs that have been told about the Phoenix Champion, and don't look for those weird rumors of some guy named Midrick, who is just there to dodge his taxes. And then there was uh, Captain Verandell, the uh, the... Uh, member of the local constabulary, leader of the local uh, uh, town police, himself uh, an elf of some means, perhaps, or some historical means, here dressed in a fine outfit, including a mask, which protrudes a, a short, modest, but impressive unicorn horn. With him, of course, he brought uh, his... Uh, newest member of the constabulary and also uh, perhaps uh, someone who's very close to him, one Annie, who herself recently really, uh, 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 relayed to him and revealed to him to be um, none other than the princess of the king and queen of Alaria, which is probably a big deal and at some point it's probably going to come up at some point. Kind of heir to the throne, kind of really shouldn't be here, kind of probably shouldn't be going into Dane. Which rocked him on the heels the night before the party, but he seems to have recovered somewhat and has brought uh, Annie along as his plus one. Perhaps thinking in different terms of how Annie and, uh, and his uh, relationship in all its different forms is actually taking place. Once uh, employer, employee, perhaps friends, and then maybe a bit more. Now, now it's probably complicated. However, both uh, Medric and uh, the lovely young woman Melora, Melora Cartwright, that uh, Medric was uh, <laughs> given as a date, I guess, uh, at the insistence both of Melora and Ardwin, who is also here somewhere, um, Voluntold, but it was an invite, so I'll take it. It's true. It's true. And Melora has been uh, trying to keep up with uh, Medric and his ways ever since. But both, uh, both you and your partners made quite a big splash in the previous uh, few hours with this enormous formal fancy dance that went on to try to, uh, I guess, cheer up the party, which had you know been going on and not really had a huge. Uh, a huge uh, uh, incident, other than the things that you've noticed, uh, that there were some strange rotting food and sour drinks at one point, which led to the discovery of a strange bag sort of 
glued to the bottom of that table. A bag which one got close to seemed to emit a certain magical power, leaving behind a partial glowing symbol, which then faded away. Um, you've reconvened with uh, some of the, you know, your your other halves, as well as Dudek Bitterhorn, the, the visiting scholar who's here as well, to try to find out more. Meanwhile, on the second floor, the party crasher, uh, the, the building invader, uh, Silas, who did not get a uh, invitation to the party, despite the fact that maybe he has a little bit more prominence among the Marsh cult than uh, Odega and Athanos, who are both here at the behest of the And Baron he probably Baroness. plays better music than whenever band they hired. But I'm just... And yes, there's been the sour notes that have been hit every once in a while uh, within the, the, uh, the strange band that's playing. Um, everyone is wearing a mask with a few exceptions being uh, the servants, uh, who are wearing very simple masks. The band themselves are wearing a mask, which is both, I believe, green and blue, green on one side, blue on the other, and kind of work as this sort of faceless chorus behind these instruments. Um, but as I said, meanwhile, on the second floor, Silas has discovered, well, a couple of things, sneaking around, trying to find more information and more uh, detail about the Baron and Baroness, Unfortunately, found that much of the place had been already examined by someone. Who we then found, then found uh, one Jordy, a dwarf of some acquaintance, who had unfortunately tricked, uh, tripped a trap, paralyzing trap, petrification trap actually, which uh, fortunately uh, Silas had a remedy for. But in the process of sneaking around, Silas was discovered, and. Not necessarily as Silas, but as one errant um, uh, servant, a new servant, apparently. But the governess had discovered him and sent the alarm. Now, that alarm state has produced a, a, a lot of activity on the second floor. On the first floor, only the guard captain has come through to tell the Baron something about it. The Baron uh, tried to dismiss it for his partygoers, simply saying it was a vermin problem of some kind not to be alarmed. Um, meanwhile, uh, one of the other people that Silas has run into is Sable. Sable, the daughter of the Baron and Baroness, and also a known associate of the Diamond, a strange, mysterious, and uh, so far unknown, uh, unknown detail. Uh, not well known, I don't know how to wait, but, but repu known by reputation only, not by detail. Uh, and let us start actually on that second floor. I'm just going to switch the map over as we have knocking going on uh, above. Get all of my screens aligned here. Um as we have knocking going on above as the the uh, the a door to door search seems to be underway. Um, Sable has been resistant to your questions uh, so far, but um, with some alarm on her face, uh, she sort of turns to you and says, I, I want to believe that I can trust you, but I'm not exactly sure what I should tell you just yet. But for now, can you make yourself look like one of the servants again? Uh, he actually already has. Okay. I wasn't sure where we'd left that off. He looks like an old servant. Like an old servant? One of the young ones, please. The, all okay, the, changes to a young servant. All of the older servants are well known. A younger face might be missed as one of the juniors. There are so many to come in and go and are here only for a short period of time. That's better. And the, the banging becomes a little more prominent on the door. Uh, you hear a guard from outside call, Who's in there? We heard voices. The doorknob is rattled, but it's locked for the moment. Silas looks at uh, Sable. This is her thing. He also looks at Jordy to see what Jordy's going to do. Jordy looks like he's climbing up um, between sort of the, the wall and the... There's a, a, a 
an arm, not an armoire, uh, a, a, a wardrobe there, and is sort of cl- climbing spider climb back up the, the the wall. Doesn't actually have spider climb, but kind of wedging himself up there to try to hide. Um, let's see here. We have. Yeah. While he's doing that, Silas is going to uh, quietly bend down and pick up the coin medallion that was under his foot. Okay. He's going to try and do that nonchalantly. That sounds like a uh, sleight of hand roll to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll try to brush away some of the glass and the carpet and whatnot. I'll give you an advantage because uh, Sable's not really paying as much attention to you, even though she's standing right beside you or real close. And Jordy's focused on something else. Yeah, I need that window open. Okay. Uh, da, 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 slight of hand. Okay. Uh, Jordy managed to sort of climb up there and practically get lost. The room isn't very well lit. In fact, it's really not lit at all. Um, and uh, you, you kind of lose track of him as he, as he climbs up the wall. Um, you managed to kind of bend down, make it look like you're just sort of stretching and, and grab onto the coin and quickly pocket it. It's fairly large for a coin, uh, a little bit, probably a couple of inches across. Um, and it's round. You can tell it's, it looks like it and feels kind of like as heavy as real gold. So it'd be far too expensive almost as a regular coin, but you're able to slip that in your pocket. You can hear the sound of keys pushing into the the uh, doorknob, and very quickly, the door is opened, and Sable takes a step towards you. This is just for safety. She kind of whispers under her breath, and wraps her arms around your shoulders, and <laughs> leans in as if for a kiss. Hmm. <laughs> Well, Silas will stand there like a servant told to stand there. <laughs> okay. Um, and I don't seem to have them on the map here, so I will just presume there is a guard that opens the door. I have little tokens for the guards that seem to be missing. Uh, and he kind of steps in, and Sable has come very close to you and kind of put her head between the door and you, and she's kind of... Uh, leaning in but not actually making contact because she still kind of, you get that impression of she still knows it's you but maybe the, the request to make a younger version of the servant was also for her to help in the moment yeah. <laughs> um, but as the door kind of swings open and, and kind of uh, uh, bounds against the wall pretty noisily um, she, she whirls around uh, and uh, shouts at the guard do you mind a little privacy, please. And you can see the guard's confusion on his face. Let's see what... Uh, I have Sable here somewhere, but I just want to know her bonus. Silas will assist by having his face suddenly go uh, red. Oh, very good use of, uh, of, of a subtle either illusion or disguise self. That, that works <laughs> pretty well, actually. Uh, her deception is moderate. Uh, but I'll roll it with advantage. So a second roll. No, oh, twenty three on the first hey. roll. Uh, as she kind of, uh, as yeah, your 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 sheepish look behind, and the guard has a has a strange sort of expression on his face. This is not something he expected to find. Clearly, um, if anything, he almost seems embarrassed to have seen it. It's a young man, probably in his twenties, uh, uh, probably half elven. You can detect just a slight curve on the on the ears. Uh, and he kind of looks wide-eyed. Oh, I, I, sorry, I um, I didn't, I didn't mean to. Uh, I didn't, I didn't see anything. And he backs quickly out of the door, close <laughs> behind. Awkward. That will buy us some time. It'll inevitably get back to my father or my mother, and there'll be all kinds of questions. But at least to the moment, um, let me have a, a, a second. Uh, maybe we could reconvene somewhere else, though. Just in case they come looking back. Sure, if you want to actually talk. If you're not going to tell me anything, then we might as well split up now. 
I'll tell you what I can. She might talk to Annie. There are some things that I have to keep more care of. And she kind of looks concerned about just the thought of, of talking a little bit. Um, but uh, um, she kind of nods up towards the, the, the corner where you saw Jordy disappear to. You had better go. We'll try again to find what we're looking for. Are you sure? And he kind of looks, un he looks, he looks at, at Silas, but it's not a, it's not really that um, questioning in a way because he's, he's seen you before. He's kind of, he kind of got a little bit of chance to know you, but it's more of the uncertainty of the situation. Yes, I'll speak to you later. Jordy, are the others here, Gaul, Veer, are they the invisible ones downstairs? Make an insight check. Cool. Yay, I got a plus one. There's a look that passes as it oh. kind of looks between you and, and uh, Sable. Um, kind of furrows his brow a little bit. There are others here. I don't know who's where. But I, I don't think anyone's invisible. Then you may have other people. And there may be others here that neither of us know about. Hmm. Uh, thanks for that. I'll I'll keep an eye out. And, and Silas uh, will just look back to Sable and see where she says to go. Okay. Jordy holds back in the room, presumably to leave after you guys have left. Um, peeking out of the hallway, um, you do hear the guards kind of in the other guest rooms, kind of looking around, stomping a bit. Um, but she will lead you with a fair amount of deftness, um, both in terms of her skill at knowing exactly where to step in the hallways here in this old creaky building that she's been in for her entire life, but also in evading those guards and uh, as if she's done the, that uh, many, many times before. But she leads you down the hallway the hallway you're familiar with, as she leads you down actually to her room. They'll never look in here. And in fact, the first thing you do, when you, or she does when she goes into the first door, is she kind of uh, tells you to hold back a little bit. Go to bed, Florentina. What's going on? You hear the young female voice of the little girl you encountered earlier. And down the hallway, is something going on? You hear the other young boy. Both of you should... Be asleep by now. But there's stuff happening everywhere. And it'll happen when you're older. The display is... Changes. Sorry? The display. Oh, sorry. I need to move the eye. Thank you very much. Uh, Silas changes to look like the governess. And then just starts... Uh, Again, singing in a high voice, like a uh, good night lullaby sort of thing. Uh, okay, uh, that will require a performance check because you don't sound like her. Nope, but it, he sounds like he did when he was outside the bathroom when the kid was taking the pee break. Oh, that's true. I'll go ahead and reveal all uh, that. Hopefully that'll work. Performance, 26. Holy moly. All right. Let's see if that does it. Yeah, I don't do it. Anyway. Uh, yeah, you. in fact, Sable turns around with some alarm, uh, hearing the governess and seeing you standing there. Do you give her any indication that it's, that it's you? Yeah, he'll give her a wink. Um, and Sable, um, kind of, as you were sleeping, 
and the door closes for Florentina, and you hear down the hallway the door kind of slowly closing for Nedward, although maybe a crack open. As the two of you move into Sable's room. I'm sorry it's small, but it's safer in here. They won't dare come in here. I would suspect not. I I don't know what you know or what you suspect, but I don't think it's probably correct. Most likely you've heard all kinds of terrible things about the diamond, for example. But it's not what everybody has been saying. It's not just a band of outlaws. And my father's not who everybody thinks he is either. That's why we're looking for things. Things that tie him to who he really is. Or who he and who is he really? A murderer? A thief? A pirate captain? Before I was born, a long time, I think. That's what the diamond has told me. And I have reason to believe him. But these things help. They reveal parts of who he was. And there's magic to reveal what they've seen. They believe there's three of them. A coin, a weapon, and a parchment. So far we haven't been able to find any of them. And with the party, we thought this would be a perfect way to well, move about un unseen. And she's kind of pacing a little bit. She's... You can tell that she wants to say more, but she's also nervous about saying anything. Hmm. There's something... Ha is your father doing something tonight? Well, there's the is party. Is it not your mother? There's the party. I am I guess it's all about politics. Then what about the book? The ritual? I don't know anything about that. We weren't looking for a book, but Jordy found it. I guess he must have thought it might have been with the parchment or, or, or something unusual. I don't know anything about that, though. Hmm. She turns away from me for a second and kind of puts her hand to her chest as if kind of taking a moment. And then the moment kind of drags on a little longer and she nods her head. Well, they've got another idea. Who has another idea? The diamond? The shadow? Sometimes hard to distinguish. Yes. We've encountered him before. Does she have one of those, like, black stones? Probably. I mean, you don't see anything with her, her fancy dress on. What else do you want to know? I'll tell you what I can. Hmm. It wasn't easy for me to believe at first when they told me about my father. I guess he must Is have there... put all that behind him when he became the Baron. 
what is the reason you believe the diamond over your parents? They've shown me things. Um, memories. It's hard to describe, but the memories were of my father as a much younger man on board a ship. And I could see him commanding all of the others, telling them that no one on the other ship could survive. They didn't show me him murdering anyone directly. I asked them to show me more, but they said it wouldn't be proper. And you believe them. There are ways of, well, creating illusions and he'll change from the governess to look like the Baron. Hmm. And then he'll change to look like the Baron wearing a pirate outfit. Some sort of, whatever he thinks a pirate outfit would look like. <laughs> it's probably not accurate. Um, she kind of laughs a little bit at the pirate outfit. It didn't look like that. That's, that's, that's more of a storybook sort of pirate. It's what I do. I know. And you probably think I'm a fool for believing them. No. It's hard but to describe. But that doesn't mean you're telling you the truth. It's hard to describe what, what the memories felt like. They were the diamond's own memories from their own perspective, from their own sight. And the last of the memories was that my father stabbing him and leaving him on the shore for dead, sailing away. But he was a member of your father's crew or he was a member of the other ship? I believe he worked with my father, yes. Hmm. Well, I can't be angry with you for trying to save someone you love. It was so long ago that nobody in town seems to remember what, what it was like when my father came here and assumed the barony. I guess the previous baron was really old and just died one day. Mm. But I have my suspicions. Memories okay. fade. I'm thinking. Um, if you need a moment, I can go back to the other group. No, it'll just be a bit. Um, okay. Whatever... Whatever is going on, I'm here to make sure that nobody, I'm here to protect those that need protecting. I feel as though something is going to happen tonight. What sort of- I thing? don't know what, there's, there's something going on. Um, out of character, uh, I forget. Did any mention the uh, the bag she found, the the bag of icky gooey stuff when she was talking with Silas, or did she not? I don't think I mentioned it to Silas because that okay. basically just happened downstairs while it was happening. Like, wasn't did, wasn't there like some sending? Getting sent back and forth. I, I might have. I think yeah, that there was, was sending, before. But... I think yeah, that was before the, the bags were found. There was. Okay. A, I think there might have been mention of the bad food, but that was about it. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
if hmm, I'm trying to think it's not that either. Um, if the invisible people are not yours, then that means there's another group here secret from us and most likely the baron and baroness as well well i don't i don't know what's going on but something's plaguing the food and with the ritual book that was found and the fact that this is the night of of opposed moons. It's too much of a, it's too much to be just a coincidence. This is the kind of night that you use to do something powerful. Like what? Like bring something here from another world like set up for a ritual that severs this place from the world around it? I don't know. But if someone intends on doing something like that, I have to stop it. That's very strange. Who would want to do that? I can assure you, that was never anything that we discussed. Although... Jordy was not lying to you. None of us were planning to be invisible. But we do have some allies who hide in shadows. So I have to look at Sable and say, is Gold one of them? Hmm. How would she respond? There are a number of people who are part of the shadow. I really shouldn't give their names. Fine. I'm going to continue my search. What are you looking for? The truth. What truth? What do you hope to uncover? I can help you look. I know of a lot more secret places around here than they think I do. I'm here to find out what the Baron and Baroness are up to. What any of the other interested groups in this area are up to. And if it's going to hurt people, I aim to stop it. I can help you with that. Although I don't really know what they're planning. They don't tell me much. And they keep to themselves. That it didn't look... Hmm. Does your father have an office? Yes, downstairs. It's off of the... Um, Mark has to reference his own friggin' map. Uh, it's off of the smaller library downstairs. Keeps it locked. I've been in there before. Does your mother have an office? Not really. There's a private sitting room she never lets me in. Took all the furniture out of it a long time ago for some strange reason. I've glimpsed Where is in. That? Uh, it's on the northern side. Just, uh, just beside the solar. Is that on this level? No. Although she spends a lot of time in the library tending to her plants, reading about plants. Frankly, it's kind of boring. 
I need to check those rooms. Whichever is currently far, whichever is farthest from the party first. Uh, well, the party is all over the first floor, as far as I know. I've been through, um, well, not as much in my mother's room, but in the office, I've been through that a little bit. But there's no direct way to get there from here. We'd have to find a way to walk through the party. I could do that. Maybe you could as a servant. Yes, that was kind of the plan. Um, but if you can tell me what you're looking for, I might have a better idea of where to find it. I won't it. know until I see it. No. The weapon, First, no. I would have thought I would have been able to find by now. It sounded pretty distinctive, but I haven't seen it anywhere. And the, the parchment, well, I know that must be hidden if it's here. Silas, Silas would say, first I need a few minutes to focus. All right, I think the party's going to be going on for quite some time yet. Uh, he's going to spend 10 minutes to uh, ritually cast Detect Magic. Okay. But he does need to use a spell slot. Um, I'll give you immediate results first, and then we'll go to the others. Sure. Um, is there any visible element of detect magic to your eyes glow blue, or is it just a, all perception? Mm. Probably looks like there's... If you look closely, it looks like there's a film of water over his eyes. Ah, cool. I'm just going to see here. Uh, I don't have my list of magical colors up, but it's going to be a muddle anyway. Alright. Yeah, the first thing he'll be looking at will be the the coin. Okay. So you're going to produce the coin or we're going to do that surreptitiously? Uh, well, he'll finish the uh, the spell first. And then if she's still there, then uh, he'll just tell her it's time to look at this first. Okay. She's still there. Um, she's kind of curious about the whole process of, of what you're doing and trying to figure that out. She's also kind of, he goes over to her, her book and kind of her desk rather and, and opens up her, her journal and starts writing in it. Um, getting a few of her thoughts down, I guess. Um, the first thing you notice as you cast the spell and kind of look around is that there is an aura of magic coming from uh, Sable's chest just below uh, the neckline of the dress. There's a strong mm. magical presence uh, right there. It's a mixture of different magics. Um, but it does have a sort of shadowy essence around it. Um, you also notice that there is a uh, sliver of magic um, on her left, the back of her left leg, uh, as if something is concealed there, uh, which is a, uh, let's see, Ooh. that would be evocation style magic, I think. And just behind her right leg, uh, there's a longer, thinner sliver of magic, which I believe is also Eve. Uh, I always forget the schools of magic. Um, Evocation is usually energy generation yeah. of some sort. Um, I think that's what it was. Uh, oh, technically transmutation magic. So, so you notice those on her right away. You found it when you pull out the coin. Um, where did you yes. find it? 
It was in the ship, in the bottle. In the ship? I looked all over that room. I didn't think to look in the ship. It would have been hard to get into when the glass was still intact. Uh, and when you look at the the uh, the coin, um, there's a little bit of hmm, kind of divination magic about it, actually. Yeah, divination would be the appropriate. Okay. So it's definitely magical. It's not super strong. It's not glowing with magic, but it is it is a sort of constant magic. What do you see? What are you looking at? I'm seeing what kind of magical aura it has. Oh. It appears to have divination magic of some sort. Perhaps the memories you were talking of. Oh. Then that's it. That would be definitely useful. And she kind of reaches to take it from you? He puts it back in his pocket. I need that. We'll see about that. After tonight, you may have it back. I'll hold you to that. We need it. Until then, this may have use with whatever is coming up. Oh, the other thing you do notice is that the, the coin itself... Um, does depict a ship on it on one side and does depict um, what looks like land on the other side. And one edge of the coin has in fact been sharpened almost to a, uh, a razor's edge. Well, then are you prepared? As prepared as I ever am. Is that a lot? I find plans disappear as soon as you meet opposition. Hmm. And that you sound like the diamond. Be prepared, but then be prepared to not be prepared for what you've come up to. He's not wrong. Sometimes I wish he was. As the great sage said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> that must be a play I've never seen. But she does kind of laugh, and it's a little bit light for the moment. Um, which mm. she feels kind of, you see her kind of feel relieved by that almost, as if it's been weighing on her a bit. Uh, we'll go back downstairs for the moment as you guys are preparing to yep. to make your assault, I guess. <laughs> wow. Um, you had just gathered together the sort of, the... There needs to be a name for this. <laughs> the squad, <laughs> including Melora, uh, Verandel, and Dudek, and told them what's what about these these things. Um, and then you had decided to try to go off into different directions and, and try to find them. So um, what I'm going to say is for ease, um, Obviously, Medric and Annie, and I, I don't know if you were, I think you may have been deciding whether you wanted to go in pairs or whether you wanted to go, go individually. You can certainly We don't want anybody around. to go by themselves just in case something happens, or at least. Right. I, um, I don't want people to go by themselves. <laughs> so what is the division here, and or we want to just break it up into two groups? Is that the easiest way to do it here? One led by Annie, one led by Medric, to make it simple? Yeah, probably. I'm assuming the Laura would be, would be coming with me. I think that was the plan that we were going to split up and cover more ground. You're right. We could do more damage that way. That's the classic one. <laughs> uh, whoops. I didn't mean to throw you into a closet. Sorry. <laughs> ah, didn't mean to then. <laughs> You're experiencing a whole lot of strange things at the moment. <laughs> um, what's Dudek doing? He's the odd man out at the moment. Do you want to go sure. with groups, uh, or, or do you want to... Yeah, yeah, I wanted to go with one of the groups, assuming Dudek wants to. Uh, so for magical shit, 
I'm not very good at it. Any are are you are you good at identifying like magical things or I'm just wondering in which group it'd be more useful. I will audibly blink at him. <laughs> I'm the not magic one in the group. <laughs> okay. All right. So Dudek, if you want to go with Annie and Durandell. Of course. I have some facility with magic. Although frankly, the field work has been a little bit limited for a while. Nonetheless, it'll be uh, interesting, I'm sure. Interesting, if not, yes. If it's not very obviously glowing of magic, I don't know. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me that the Baron and Baroness have quite a few minor and major magical things around here. It might be a little um, confusing, but we can certainly take a look. And with that, he's he um, kind of taps the side of his of his forehead... You see him blink for a couple of minutes and blink very rapidly, and little gold stars seem to appear in the corners of his eyes. There, that should help my vision a bit. Oh my. <laughs> so, of the group here, who's wearing anything magical at the moment? <laughs> I don't think I am, actually. I would still have my ring. Okay. Uh, which is invisible. Uh, and oh, where's my items? Uh, Vice, I think you're hiding on you. Vice is hiding on me, yes. Uh, ah, inventory, there we go. Um, and I would have the brooch of shielding pinned uh, on the inside of my outfit. Okay. And Dudek kind of scans over and you, you see his eyes light in certain areas. He does light on where the, the brooch probably is. Um, and when you half turn at any point, he would have noted that the that vice is somewhere on you. He also notes the ring, which he does. There's a sort of wrinkled forehead moment, but he doesn't ask about it. Um, and uh, um, uh, probably looks at, at Verendel. Uh, and there's another kind of raised eyebrow, um, and Verendel's strictly for entertainment purposes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure what that was all about. You may have to ask Verendel about that later. Uh, Medric, do you wear any magical items? Not right now, no, or at least not that I remember. Okay. I don't think I have any, uh, any like magical items. Yeah. Like there's the shield, which is magical. I don't have that with me. Yeah, but I will also cast detect magic. Okay. Uh, what is your detect magic manifest like, if anything? Just uh, words. It's like flaming eyes a little bit. Okay. Which kind of like a little kind of normal fire flash. Yeah. They they just kind of spark up a little bit more than usual. And then there's like a little bit of smoke that dissipates quickly. <laughs> I kind of half imagine anime eyes suddenly appear, but no, I won't. I won't go that far. In the suggestion, <laughs> um, and you see the similar sort of things for Annie. The the invisible ring you'd never noticed before, um, but you weren't surprised to to have a sense of of vice um, or the brooch. Uh, Dudak has a number of little things here and there, um, like little magical trinkets. A couple of his buttons are magical. I'm not sure why. Um, and uh, about half of the rings on, on his left hand are magical of one kind or another. Medric knows about the ring because I told him about it when I cast um, uh, the thing with Vice. No, no, when... when oh. There was a point you had taken it off and then put it back on. Might have been then. No, but the um, what is it? The the spell that I can cast with vice is oh, detect uh, uh, zone, uh, zone, zone of, of truth. truth. Yeah, right, right. Yes, well, because when Medric cast zone of truth on uh, Gaetano, I warned him that I had uh, a ring that prevented it from work the spell from working on me. Okay. Okay. Um, so you're aware of it. It's still kind of weird to see a magical aura where nothing exists because it's still invisible. Um, you notice that that uh, uh, Verendel's clothing is glowing with 
transmutation magic. It's not strong, but it's, it's definitely there. Okay. Um, and Melora has no magic on her whatsoever. So how do you proceed to look through these rooms? We won't go room by room. Rather, it's going to be kind of you point at a room with the group that's there. You'll roll to see if you uh, see how the search goes and so forth. And there will be a few right, people um, moving well, around. Uh, I'm going to say that... Uh, Ocean so we can probably go uh, from uh, south to north, so Melora and I can start in the game room. Okay. And I... Yep, and we'll go to, to this room here. This room here. Okay. That door is still closed. Um, mm-hmm. It is a wooden door with a frosted window, uh, actually double paint, double door frosted windows on the inside. Um, so you can't see anything on the inside. For uh, Medric and Melora, um, going down to the game room, uh, I did um, just sort of update that moment with uh, with uh, Ocean, who's the salmon, and Maximus, who's the dragonborn um, leader of the circus. They're there kind of... The two of them... Well, okay. <laughs> Maximus is playing cards. You're not really sure what Ocean is doing. Because while he's on the other side of the table with the cards, he seems to be not entirely certain about what the rules are. And Maximus <laughs> is telling him a whole lot about what the rules are, perhaps too much. Uh, but as you as you enter, um, Ocean welcomes you uh, warmly, and Maximus is kind of there, a little guardly, but, but still has that sort of plastered on face. Uh, you proceed to look around, and ha- describe to me the general way you're investigating this room, because it happens to be occupied. All right, because um, most of the bags, like the slimy bags, were under objects. So I'm assuming it would be either like under a side table, under the table, or under a chair, under a desk maybe. So um, me and Melora would have uh, made a plan beforehand, probably. Uh, just say you lost something, and we're looking for it, like on the floor. Got like it. A, a ring, maybe, or a necklace, or an earring. Well, I'm not likely to fling my necklace around, but a ring, maybe, or an earring, might be a little bit more. Uh, uh, more likely. And she reaches up and kind of undoes one of the earrings she's wearing uh, and kind of good, pockets good. it. Just in case. And So go ahead and make an investigation check. It's with advantage. Oh, right. um, investigate. There are a number of magical auras already in this room. Um, there is, uh, that you would, you get kind of for free, um, over by the wine rack, essentially there is an enchantment on the wine rack itself. Seems to be some sort of, uh, evocation. Um, there are, uh, amongst the cards, there seems to be. Oh, did you say at at advantage? It is at advantage. Yes. Okay. Because I got a two on my first Uh, one. Amongst the cards, you do notice that every once in a while, there's a small magical dot on some of the cards. You're not sure what that's all about. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cards on the table between Maximus and uh, and uh, Ocean. Um, you detect a magical aura in the lamp. So the lamp uh, in the corner here has a magical evocation uh, aura. But the, that doesn't surprise you because it's never burning lamp. So it kind of makes sense. Uh, and for the most part, oh, there's a small magic uh, spot on the top of the mantelpiece that's here. And you realize it's just a sparker. It's just a a very low level uh, create flame instead of a match. So they do indeed have a lot of little magical things around. Um, But my rolls were shit, so uh, does Melora get to roll? (laughs) uh, Melora gave you advantage. (laughs) Shit. Um, As the two of you are kind of looking around and, and Melora kind of explains, I lost my earring in here somewhere, I'm sure of it. And kind of poking around and looking underneath the chairs and stuff, and it's it's a little disruptive. And 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 Maximus kind of covers over his cards and looks a little bit suspicious. Uh, Ocean kind of pitches in, but he doesn't know what you're really looking for. I mean, when she describes an earring, he's like, "I don't really know what that is." Um, it's a thing that goes on your ears. Oh, clever name, then I like it. Um, 
But as you're kind of digging around, uh, it almost feels like Ocean is too eagerly looking around and shoving things. You're not really sure if he's looked under them properly. Um, but in, in, at one point, he picks up a bottle, looks under the bottle, as if it was somehow attached to the bottom of the bottle. But nothing seems Does to be Does he find here. snacks under the table? Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, no, no snacks under the table. Okay. And, and the obvious locations, like underneath the main card table, doesn't seem to be anything. Uh, doesn't seem to be anything by the, the sort of game boxes and, and stuff that are stored over there. Uh, Maximus looks a little bit curious, and this is probably the, the more negative result, is that you're looking at places where no earring should ever be able to get, and it's getting a little bit obvious. Uh, and then Maximus is sort of, uh, maybe you lost it in another room. Yes. Yeah, possibly. We will keep eyes okay. out for it. Oh, yeah. Cool. It looks exactly like uh, the one that's on another ear. And with this... Oh, oh we like, found it, says Ocean. No, it's the it's the other. They come in pairs. As you kind of back one out for of the each room. ear. <laughs> All right, enjoy your game. Sorry about the disruption. Um, I'm just going to get the right map here. Melora follows you out. That that was not that didn't go. Did you find anything? I didn't find anything. I didn't find anything. He was distracting me. I think he but was cheating the cards though. Yeah, I saw the little magic dots. But I mean, how hard would he have to cheat? The ocean doesn't even know how to play cards. I don't know him that. I hope well. they weren't playing for actual money. I don't know Ocean that well, but he always struck me as a. Smart guy. He likes to play up the fact that most land dwellers don't know anything about Triton. Well, I disagree with his uh, dietary choices, but that's to each their own. Ugh. Yeah. Um, when you're back out in the hallway, one thing you do kind of notice is the the numerous paintings that are here, and many of them are simple paintings. They're, you know, landscapes, and you, you get the impression there's been there's been lots of paintings put up here over a while. And every once in a while, you do see a painting with this sort of uh, sheen of, of mild transmutation magic on the frame itself. Um, you're not sure exactly what that's for, but you do kind of see that and just some, some random paintings that don't mean anything to you. I'll just kind of touch it gently, if there, if there is one right, right in front of me. Sure. There's yep. magic in these paintings. Really? It looks kind of dull, kind of derivative, really. I could probably paint something better. I mean, some kind of transmutation. Oh. And as you what watch I... and pay attention to the painting for a little while, you notice that the the uh, the trees in the painting are are shimmering slightly, as if blown by wind. Okay. Well, that's neat. Is that something? It's probably just an effect to make it look nicer or look more lively. Like, do I know, like, why would they, why they would do that? Was it, like, self-cleaning, or is it just to um, make it animated? You can make an Arcana check. All right, I will do that. And at minus one, because that's... Wow. <laughs> yeah, it just makes it look prettier, like, animated and stuff. Kind of like Silas does, but in a picture. Yeah, maybe. Um, otherwise, it's just kind of this odd, this odd effect. Switch over to the other side of the hallway now. Annie and Dudek and uh, uh, Verandel are standing outside of these double doors. Verandel tries the door. It's locked. I pull a bobby pin out of my hair <clears throat> and take a look to see if anybody else is down the hall. Angus is standing, or staggering, kind of down the hallway a little bit. Sees a lot of you and just sort of turns away and turns and walks away, um, muttering to himself does not seem to be having a great party maybe it started with bad food or too much liquor you maybe both a little bit of column a a little bit of column b <laughs> varandell looks a little bit embarrassed you know I, I can't officially endorse this kind of walks down to to stand in the corner to make sure no one's coming around <laughs> i'll try to pick the lock okay um the, the, there is some magic on the door, but it doesn't look too strong. Be cautious. Hmm. Do you think it might make a noise? I'm not... Well... 
And he kind of looks around. He kind of takes one of his rings and twists it a little bit, waves it over the door. Not for a while. Okay, I will. Uh, please tools. Uh, 14, so 25. 25, okay. Let me just... I have expertise in thieves tools. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> it's always still kind of fun to just see massive rolls. So I will see if I can reveal this. Revelio, what's the proper word I have to say? Ha, there we go. Uh, as the door un unclicks and it is unlocked uh, before you. I just need to switch to that. Um, as you open the door, are you just opening the door or are you being cautious at all? Um, I would be cautious. I'm also going to put my ear to the door just to make sure. Just okay. to see if there's anything else that I can hear. Make a perception uh, check that's sound based. 14. 14. OK. Uh, yeah. Um, you do hear the sound as soon as the doors open. In fact, it's weird because the door itself seems to have blocked a lot of sound. It was, you didn't hear anything when the door was closed, but the moment you crack it open a slight bit, uh, you do hear the sound of uh, someone uh, moving around, and it looks like they're, they're overturning things. Um, and then you crack the door open a little bit wider, and you can see a figure standing there. The room is dark. Um, I don't, well, you don't have your goggles on because that would be really weird at a party unless you built them into the, that would be the mask or something. Um, I'm going to giggling open the door. Okay. Like <sighs> talking to Dudek. Um, that is, uh, for, for performance, that's a 28. Okay. It's very convincing. In fact, Dudek and Verandel both look at you rather surprised as you kind of stumble in through the door. Um, you see in front of you a a, uh, a figure. Um, let's see. Yeah, you would have you would have noted this figure coming in. Uh, it's a a small, slender figure that has what looks like uh, a a doe's head as their as their mask. But as you step into the room the figure dissolves into shadow and floats out through a small opening in the window and whisks away, vanishing into the night. That was strange. And uh, They seem to be looking for something. Farindale and Dudek are both kind of catching up to you a little bit. But who, who was that? Where did they go? They turned into a shadow. That's not good. Best quickly get inside before anyone sees us step in. Yep. Inside, um, it was described, uh, well, actually, I don't think you guys have seen or heard that description, but um, it would be what is described as a solar. Uh, it faces north to capture some of the, the, the north uh, the North Vision, so it's facing kind of upland, uh, following the coast. Um, there is, uh, I don't have all the furniture in there, but essentially um, there are um, various pots with uh, essences and incenses and um, a, uh, a large, uh, uh, looks kind of like a telescope as well to observe the sun or observe the stars. The windows go all the way to the top, and then this actually extends out from the building a bit. So you have windows that cross, that go over the top of the of the room at an angle as well, that are all very, very clear. Mm -hmm. The idea is you could actually be in here and observe uh, about half of the sky directly from here and watch it. Um, there's also a plinth in the middle, uh, which looks like just sort of a raised area for someone to stand. 
Um, you get the impression that at one point in time, this may have actually been a, uh, a small temple within the building as well. Um, there are, mm -hmm. there are, there's furniture off to the side that's sort of piled up and you realize that they're probably benches, wooden benches, mm -hmm. as if this was meant to gather a small group of people. And there's a, 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 a stone stand there at an angle to hold a book facing out towards the, the windows. And that's kind of okay. where the, the uh, telescope is attached. So the, this thing is the stand, this is the plinth, and then the telescope is just sort of attached to one side. And while I only have the one bench here, imagine that both sides are kind of piled high with benches. And there's a number, number of boxes. It looks like a number of the boxes have been opened. Mm -hmm. Some of them have um, uh, uh, sort of shipping labels and, and straw still in them. Someone's going through them. Um, Verandel would kind of close the door behind uh, behind you as well to keep from anybody taking a look. Yep. Um, it is dark in here, so um, I cannot see anything. Uh, so I'm going to pull Vice out and use it as a flashlight, basically. Okay. Dudek and Verandel are not bothered by the darkness. <laughs> the small amount of moonlight that's coming in from this particular angle, actually a fair amount of moonlight because both moons are out uh, in opposition but still out, uh, is plenty enough for them to see. Mm -hmm. um, Verandel does look at you with a, with a bit of, a, of an eyebrow raised. Uh, you, you, you brought it with you? Of course I did. I always have a dagger on me, at the very least. I don't know whether to be touched or afraid. It's two laws you broke tonight. <laughs> I am. Hey, I've broken a lot of laws to get out of a castle. <laughs> really? Um, Dudek is kind of turns. Really? I'm, prison I'm responding. <laughs> I'm responding to metrics. All oh. of the laws I've broken. <laughs> <laughs> um. um what do you I'm suppose look they were at... looking for, and what are what should we be looking for? You said it was a bag, right? It looked like a little pouch, and then there was a some sort of symbol that appeared when I moved the pouch. A symbol, you say? Hmm. Um, I'm going to start looking in the boxes that weren't overturned because. They obviously are looking for something as well, but didn't find it in those boxes. I will also apologize because I said we weren't going to go room by room and then we're immediately going room by room. I just found it too interesting to 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 not jump into, so I apologize for that. It's going to take longer it's than all good. intended. Um, so you have a choice here. Um, with the other one, because it was only one other person, they basically just helped out. You can mm -hmm. have one of these two people helping you. You can have one of them leading and you be helping. Uh, probably you're going to be the most perceptive for the bunch anyway. You can also have two roles, and you can choose which of the two, Verandel or Dudek, will be doing the role. Um, well, I don't actually have a good investigation. Um, so I would probably have each of us roll our own roles at the very least. Uh, and I would tell, um, Dudek, because he can see magic stuff, is, is there anything that looks magical that you can see? And then have Verandel take a look on the, at the open boxes, and I'll take a look at the closed boxes. Will do. Let's see. So you're going to have Verandel roll with advantage then and Dudex on his own. Sounds like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> Verandel should be better at this. Uh, okay. For some reason, roll uh, beyond 20 is not working, so just a minute to roll that for... Verandel. That's a dirty 20 to start with. That's pretty good. Dirty 20 to 4. Very good that he had help. And then 4. Um, Dudek. So, natural 21. 
It's like so, all the good rolls are on the right side of the room. Or yeah. the map. Na- a natural 21 would be, <laughs> would be a Maximus roll. Um, you managed to find a 21 and a 20-sided die. <laughs> so, um, Dudek kind of takes one side where some of the open ones are, and there's something interesting over here, and kind of takes a look. And you and Verendel spend some time kind of with the crates. You can see that, you know, there are a few that were opened, and... Um, on top, you're seeing, again, more sort of essential oils and uh, um, uh, different uh, weird bits and pieces. There's some things in jars that don't, that, you know, kind of clay jars that are sealed. Um, make an arcana check. Let me just try to put that together. Nine. Nine? It's just a weird collection of junk, probably meant to be burned and smelled. That's about all you can figure out from that stuff. On the other side, um, Dudek whistles as he kind of goes over to one open crate. Well, this is interesting. And he pulls forward a vase about a foot and a half long made of what looks like very crude clay. Uh, It looks like it has a, a, a stone or cork stopper on the very top. Looks very, uh, a little crude, but it's also got uh, symbols carved across it. Very strange. Uh-oh. Some sort of necromantic magic attached to this thing. Not familiar with. Wait, is that Athlonian script? Uh oh. Don't, don't say it out loud. Last time we read something that was in Athlonian, did not go well. Strange. I've seen a number of Athlonian artifacts, but uh, I'm not familiar with. The vases and why they should be oh, so interesting. The magic seems to be strong within. Any idea why this might be here? I don't know, but the last vase we found, we there's been issues with people stealing vases, and that might be something that they were they were also looking for. Hmm. Well, it was well packed inside, heavy straw. Box itself has a bit of a reinforcement magically as well, so it wouldn't be broken open easily. Mm. A prize, something to put on your mantelpiece, I suppose. Maybe it's not what we're looking for, though. No, but it's something we should probably confiscate if we can find a reason to be in here. Probably. Let's put it back for now. We know that it's there. Yeah. I may see if I can have a chat with the Baron and Baroness about the things that have been going on. We haven't exactly been able to report some of these things. Mm-hmm. There were some thefts that were reported before, but I didn't think too much of them. Um, remember, fresh my memory. Does Verendel know about the vase? That, uh, that, uh, the, that Marigold had. He knows that we have, we were looking at something with boss thefts and shadows. Okay. So he doesn't really so, know what this is necessarily, other than necromantic magic is probably bad. And, and that there have been thefts of vases by shadows. Okay. <laughs> So that's probably what the shadow was looking for, and I would suggest putting it back in that magically enhanced box. And I'm closing the window too, because the shadow might get back. But I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dudek handles it very carefully. You get the impression that, I mean, he's a little bit of an archaeologist, <laughs> so he's, there's a certain appreciation he has for these things, but there's also you know, magic power emanating from it. Um. And so he does kind of gingerly put it back. Shame, though. I should like to take a closer look at some time. Well, I don't see what we're looking for in here, so we should probably not stick around. Indeed. And Verendel kind of looks at the door. So how do we get out? Ah, one moment. And he once again, Dudek goes over and twists his, his finger. There. The alarm should be suppressed for another few minutes. 
perfect. And I like peek my eye out quickly and then usher people up. Okay. Uh, let's call this a uh, group stealth check. If there are kind of people milling about the front and who could potentially see. Peacock and the eagle are talking, kind of wandering back and forth. Uh, let's see. Mm, surprisingly good at stealth. 26. Unsurprisingly yeah, pretty good. good at stealth. Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, give uh, Dudek advantage. Dudek rolls eight twice. <laughs> so Dudek uh, is following up the rear and not necessarily doing stubs his toe. And that twenty for and a four. That twenty for Varendel, who seems surprisingly quiet on his feet. Uh, in fact, you're almost not sure he's there until you kind of look back and he's right there. He's literally following in your footsteps. The two of you sneak outward, and then Dudek following up behind grasps both of the doors as if to close them, and does, and slams them closed by accident, uh, making quite a noise. Um, it draws some attention from uh, from the two over here, whose names I, I have. That would be, uh, oh, the eagle and the peacock. The peacock you've previously seen is... And I don't think you know who the eagle is, but she's, they're kind of talking to, to each other. And the eagle turns over to look and sees the sort of the, the three of you. I would imagine that sort of Annie and Varendal are both stepped out by now and kind of around the corner. And Dudek sort mm -hmm. of standing there uh, grandly, having closed the doors. Uh, and uh, um, you kind of, there's a moment, uh, you I don't know how you would catch the eye from that particular angle, but I'm describing it anyway as there's a moment of relief coming from the eagle, as in, oh, good, something else to, to distract me from hearing more from this guy. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Dudek kind of, uh, uh, with a side, sort of sideway glance at the two of you, as in, go on, I'll handle this, uh, strides over to, to chat with the eagle and the peacock. Quite a beautiful-looking building, isn't it? Those are not the bathrooms. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go down the hall here, see if there's anything I catch on the wall walls um, going down here. Okay. And I'll just say that Angus is sort of continuing to meander. Just about to collide with Odega here, which would be kind of funny. Oh. <laughs> um, this particular hallway has... Uh, Actually, it's a series of antique mirrors, uh, different shapes and sizes. Looks like they've been gathered over time and kind of put here for some reason in this particular hallway. The hallway doesn't face a window. There's no, there's no uh, 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 kind of reason to have them there. But it is a little unsettling as there's mirrors on both sides and you get this weird kind of infinite corridor kind of imp impression as you walk down. Other than mirrors, is there anything? There's no door to this room or anything. Does not appear to be a door on that side. You do know there's a door on the, uh, uh, sorry, on the corner here. Okay. So there's just a random hallway. Looks like it. Hmm. Strange building. Um, you can take some time to investigate if you want. Yeah, I'll look around the mirrors okay go ahead and make an investigation check with advantage Verando will help you out is are they likely to be behind be behind mirrors is that it how is this supposed to work i don't know um that's a 12 12 yeah it, it it actually gets even more disorienting as you move a mirror slightly and all the reflections seem to shift and change uh this sort of house of mirrors effect uh, the one thing you note is that at the end of the hallway, where there's another mirror kind of at the end, um, looks like the mirror was installed where a former doorway was. So this was once a hallway that led outside, but they've just taken the doorway and moved a mirror there instead. All 
right. Uh, switch back to the other side of the room. Where are Melora and um, Medric going? Probably to the next room, which is a library. Or unless, is there anything like here next to me, to the left? Uh, you do see that there is a door leading into the cloak room on the back. Um, the door is actually you're right in front of the door. So right there, there's a door okay. which leads into the, into the back side of the cloak room. Probably the what servant's the, door, mm -hmm. and in fact, it's it's. You notice the door is there, but it's one of those doors which is meant to be hidden from normal view. Uh, the, the the wall looks like just another wall, but you can see there's a doorknob there. All right, and what about to the uh, west? Uh, looks like just a wall. Okay. Um, actually, make a perception check. Ah, perception is something I have more than minus one in. Twenty-three total. Twenty-three, kind of mirroring the fact that there's a semi-hidden door on the inside. There's a semi-hidden door on the other side as well, which seems to lead towards the outside. Again, right. it's kind of it even has a, a lantern on this sort of the, the wall as well, as if it's meant to not really be seen. There's no doorknob on this particular side though, but you kind of make out the edges of the door. Okay, I'll point that out to Malora. Curious and curious. And I'll try to, yeah. And I'll just try to push it open, see what happens. It does not push. You get heavy Is there like a latch or something I can grab onto to pull it? Nothing obvious. Okay. Anything not obvious? <laughs> I don't know. You can spend some time investigating it if you want. Uh, that's an investigation roll, isn't it? it? Seems appropriate. Hey, Melora, do you, can you figure out how to open this? I mean, I can, maybe, with your help. Is it important? Possibly. I mean, it's a hidden door, and we're looking for, we're looking for hidden things, so it's a good place to start. So I will roll investigation and get a three. That's with advantage? Uh, maybe Andy can figure it out. That's with advantage, because Melora is helping Oh, you. advantage, right. It is not with advantage. 15 with advantage. 15? Yeah. The only real thing hanging on this entire section is the light. And so you kind of reach up to the light and sure enough, with a bit of effort, you can pull on the light, which sort of you hear a small click from within and the door kind of swings outward towards you. It is very obvious. Um, nobody seems to be around you at the moment. All right. Do you open it up? Yep. As you open it up, walking towards you, uh, you see the guard captain kind of walking. And you can see beyond him, there's doors towards the outside as well. And the guard captain's uh, looking at the door opening up. This isn't the place you should be. Go back to no, the No, I didn't even realize it. I didn't realize it was a place. I was just uh, looking at the light, and I accidentally touched it, and boom, then the door opens. That's a deception roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're out and out lying. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Full face lie. Right, Melora? That's a 16. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You still shouldn't be digging around or pawing at the furniture. You can see the guard yeah, captain is kind of like a craftsman. An older, an older, crustier kind of man. You can see some, some scars on his face from probably some fighting. Uh, and he's dressed in the guard captain's uniform. It doesn't seem to fit all that well. It's sort of, it's sort of worn out a little bit maybe um but yeah he had then i'll proceed to explain to him that i was you know as i was rebuilding the temple of ignis that light looked really nice and i was wondering like hey maybe, maybe i could like like put some of these like lights or lights from the same maker in the temple of ignis in the future but anyway it's getting awkward by sorry about that yeah i don't know anything about the the lighting just if you're gonna poke around things then don't okay talk to the baron or baroness about your light problem and he kind of pulls it closed behind uh, behind the conversation. And you hear not only the initial latch, but you probably hear something which is like a lock as it seems to lock into place. Wow, um, rude. I will say that as you as you kind of looked beyond, actually, Melora would have pointed it out as well afterwards, huh? after you kind of stepped out. Um, you did see that there were trap doors in the floor uh, in that yeah. small hallway, hallway as well. 
Um, then you so proceed. there's a basement. Well, yeah, of course, there's a basement. Up I'll let Annie you. know that. Hmm? Sorry, you let what new? I, I was I was gonna say like I'll let Annie know that there's a trap door. Okay. Do you have sending? I mean, like whenever I get up, whenever I meet up with her again. Oh, okay. Um, as you're approaching the library, um, you almost walk into uh, the tall, blonde. Uh, oh, what's her date? <laughs> Um, I'm trying to if the tall blonde came with. Is that Ardwin's date? Yes, that's what it was. I was trying to think. Right, right. Uh, and in fact, uh, yes. So the tall, slender, uh, rather attractive blonde wearing this this sort of uh, uh, yellow lace uh, curtain as a uh, as a mask is kind of sauntering out uh, to you. There's, you, right beside you, you can kind of feel Melora go a little stiff because this is the woman her dad came with. Mm -hmm. um, as she kind of almost walks into you, uh, and uh, uh, kind of kind of giggles, and she puts her hands on your on your uh, on your shoulders as she sort of falls into you, and you can kind of feel her uh, fairly close to you. Oh, sorry, uh, sorry about that. Uh, and Are you okay? Kind of tugs you backwards away from her. Oh, is, my, yes. is all my stuff still there? <laughs> I mean, you can do an inventory check if you want to, but uh... not right now. But like after, <laughs> yeah. Um, and she's taller than you, which is rather surprising. There's not a lot of people yeah. that, that tall. Um, maybe giant's blood or something. Who knows? Um, oh, I'm fine. This place is really big and confusing. I was looking yeah, for is. another room, I think, but I didn't find it. Which room? Well, I don't know. An interesting room? This one's kind of okay, but there's nobody in. Well, we're here. Oh, hi. And I'll walk in. You can go now, says Melora. <laughs> to me or to her? To her. Okay. <laughs> okay. And the woman kind of kind of just sort of saunters through and sees Angus there and kind of wanders over to Angus. Can Can I make some kind of a insight check like is, is she okay really <laughs> uh <laughs> insight check sure okay is she drunk or is she up to something i mean she may also not have a lot of of things going on in general 13 insight 13 not bad great yeah yeah she seemed kind of flighty and and uh disconnected and and kind of uh um uh, I don't know, just not really all there. Yeah. It seems odd that uh, Ardwin Cartwright, who's like, who seems to have his shit together and be fairly ruthless to, anyway, I'll ask my Laura, it's like, do you, do you know this person? Like, have you, has your dad seen her before tonight? And her back kind of stiffens. We've had discussions, my father and me. I think it's foolish for a man of his age to be chasing things like that prizes i suppose she's always around these days it's rather creepy yeah she's either really drunk or up to something from what i think but uh was she any different tonight than she normally is no it's like hoping for Oof. a different kind of rain i suppose what was that? It's like look, it's Can like you... expecting some other kind of rain. It's always wet, no matter what happens. What, what's always wet? Oh, never mind. No, she she's always like that. It's oh. ridiculous. It makes a fool out of him. And if he yeah, expects he doesn't seem... that she's going to somehow take the place of my mother, well, that's not going to happen. Yeah, Ardwin seems like the kind of person who would not be willing to spend his life with somebody who behaves that way. There might be something going on, but we can deal with that later. What's on this side of the room? Um, this room is rather sparsely uh, uh, furnished in terms of, well, I guess there's bookshelves along the, the sort of top edge of the room, but 
mostly they're, they're kind of objects of art and a few books that are in here. The mm -hmm. books are pretty general uh, topics. Um, there's books on on uh, uh, birds and on trees and on plants and on, on agriculture and on, you know, that sort of uh, weather knowledge as well. Uh, there is a big bookcase uh, off to the, uh, the far wall. This is where you actually met with the Baron to talk before as well. Okay. Anything magical? Um, that would have worn off unless you want to recast it. Because okay. that lasts for about 10 minutes. Yeah, I just figured because we were like switching back and forth. To, like we were well, kind of like switching simultaneously. You took an entire room and searched it, which is like a 10 minute type thing. Okay. And then in the hallway, you got one last sort of breath of that. Okay. Oh, what's against the south wall? Like the black area? That should not be hidden. <laughs> okay. That was that was that was Mark. That that was Mark uh, being a little imprecise with his uh, his tools here. There we go. It's just a back wall. Um, I can are, see the books now. There are some bookshelves there too as well. Um, and you know, the books in this era are sometimes hardbound. Sometimes they're just paper sheaths. You do see a few uh, 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 carved spines, which is actually something that. Uh, the orcs do, um, like mm -hmm. there's a carved bear spine that has, uh, an orcish tail written on the, on the curve of it. Um, which you would be familiar okay. with a little bit from growing up. I'll pick that one up, see what it says. Okay. Like what the title is. I'm assuming you do read orc. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's, it's, it's one of those, uh, it's a hunting tale, um, kind of hunting, uh, for, uh, a large bear. And it describes the bear as the size of a mountain, <laughs> which might be an exaggeration. So it might be kind of a kid's tale, or it might be a legend. Okay. Um, but it's it's un it's unusual to see this far uh, this far southeast. Um, the orc lands are in the northwest, the very opposite side of of Omasia. Um, so it's it's a little unusual, which is why it kind of stands out to you. Okay. Huh, this must have traveled far, and I'll put it back. Ooh, gruesome. All right, so let's look under every object in this room. All right. So the two of you search. Again, you can do yep. separate searches or one with advantage. Mm, let's do one with advantage. Okay. All right, I'll lift up the couch. You look under. All right. At least I don't have to be looking for a earring this time. Yeah. Okay, so if Melora's looking, does that mean she does not have a penalty to to uh, investigation? Oh, because I'm assuming gonna, her inch doesn't. Have her lead, okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll have I'll roll for her, and she can get advantage. Uh, she has a. Oh, I don't have a character sheet for her. Um, let's see, investigation is based on intelligence, so she would have a plus three. Nice. And remember, if you see some kind of like weird symbol, make sure you memorize it. Or try to remember it. So there's an 18 and a 7, so she'll take the 18. 18? As I hold up the couch. <sighs> Doesn't appear to be under the couch, kind of looking under the chairs. But as you go towards the corner of the room, mm -hmm. there's an odor which Melora rolls her, or uh, wrinkles her fingers, or wrinkles her nose at. And there's sort of a, a weird feeling she's getting. And as she looks down, uh, this would be this corner where this little table is. And as she looks down and she looks at it, uh-oh, I think I found one. What do we do? Go get Annie and the rest of them. The rest of who? Uh, Verindel and uh, Dudak. Okay. I'm assuming if I don't touch it, or if we don't touch it, it'll stay where it is. And Dudak is more skilled in magical arts than I am. All right, I'll I'll see what I can find. And she kind of leaves, looks both ways, and then kind of strides, uh, purposely avoiding the yellow lace woman, <laughs> uh, and then spots Dudak down here talking, and 
tries to get his attention. We will go back upstairs. Do I have time to use the washroom? Probably. All right, AFK, real quick. So the the time needed to to uh, switch rooms, do that spell, talk a little bit. That's basically what's happened. Um, okay. What was your next intention? Uh, we were heading down. Or she was going to lead me to her mother's sitting room that was always locked. Okay. Uh, it's going to be hard to get there. Um. Second, I'm going to bring up another uh, instance of the map. There wouldn't be a secret passageway to this one, would there? Not that I've been able to find. Not directly to her room, anyway. Uh, there are a number of them, and there's a servant's entrance as well, which is a bet. We could possibly take the servant's entrance uh, downstairs. I can get close. I don't know how to open her door, though. I've tried picking it, and it doesn't seem to work. Hmm. Well, we can take a look at it. We'll lead on. All right. And she leads you... Oops. Wrong map. Uh, back out. So, I'm going to... I think I can do this. By the way, I would have put Vice back away before I left the room. And in the mirror, I'm like fixing my hair and putting my, my tools back in my hair. Okay. I'm just going to do a global reveal. I think I can do that. Uh, reveal. Well, okay, never mind. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> Um, so yeah, she'll lead you out into the hallway. It's probably the easiest way to display this. Um, there are still guards around, so she does get you to change back to the, uh, the servant. Mm-hmm. Yep, he'll uh, just change to another random servant. And in fact, kind of, uh, leads you by the hand as well. Um, leads you down. And around he'll whisper to her or say just low enough for her to hear just so you know i am married what oh ew um as she turns you the, <laughs> as she turns the corner there um she steps uh over to the door uh, and then looks down towards the other end of the hallway And pauses for a second. As if listening for something. Okay. okay. The guards have stopped looking in this floor. So we shouldn't be disturbed. Um, the library is front of you she tries the door and then realize it's locked it's going to take me a few minutes to open this up so this is the library or her yeah. mother's sitting room you're still on the second floor so it's the it's the library. okay okay it does depend on well, there shouldn't be anybody in the cloakroom right now we should be all right and is she trying to pick the lock or yes uh i'll say uh you might want to try these and hand her the uh the advantage giving tinkering tool pick lock things she looks at them with a bit of reverence uh, these are beautiful why do i want to ask 
According to Annie, they're good for picking locks. I mean, once you get used to them and kind of just imagining this collection of weird tools, they're all gnome sized, which is why they're good for picking locks because they're tiny um, and they're excellent, excellently built. So you can put pressure on them without worrying about them breaking or anything. Uh, but she takes the, the, the set into her hands and it's like, these are okay. I can work with this. And she sets to the door and the, She's had training. You've watched Annie do this a number of times, and Annie uh, is uh, well skilled. But it's kind of obvious that that she did most of it by practice, I think, more than by you know formal training. But you're watching uh, Sable, and Sable has had training. Like she's methodical, she's specific, she's uh, deliberate in every movement she makes with these tools. Uh, and let's see how she does on the door. Oh, and it does open. Um, with a little click. There. Yay. I've been trying to get into these, this door for a while. Thanks for the tools. You'll get them back. Yeah, no, she's <laughs> heading them back. Um, and leads you into the library. No body of Geordi this time, thankfully. Um, I don't know... why this is doing this but I should be able to reveal just a second ah okay there we go there were physical walls so I should be able to do that now you can see so just like on the other side um, there is another hidden passage behind the bookshelves here. And uh, she reveals that passage and kind of pokes her head in, um, looking down the stairs. Um, good. It looks like all the servants have left the cloakroom. We shouldn't be under, we should be undisturbed as long as we can slip back into the hallway. Besides, you'll look appropriate. Cloakroom. Are they in the base? Are they uh, under the cloakroom in the main room? So they're on the second floor right now. Okay. However, um, she does lead you cautiously down the stairs. And miracle of miracles. Everybody's on the same floor for once. At least briefly. And I need to bring my... My Sable and my Silas, who have been patiently waiting on the in the lower level of this building for a while and never to be brought in. Uh, at least briefly, as these stairs do continue downward, it's a very narrow stairway meant for servants only. Um, What's in the basement? The basement? It's storage mostly. Um, it's where we put uh, extra food. It's where the wagons are, are stored. There's also some um, supplies that are kept there, that sort of thing. There's a lot of, um, of the uh, servants live downstairs. Okay. Do you want to go down there? It's a lot harder to hide no, down let's... there. No, let's continue to uh, your mother's room. And so at that point, she kind of opens the door briefly. Um, you'd better go first. If they see me coming out of there, it might be questionable, but if they see a servant coming out, it shouldn't make any difference. And you step out, and in fact, are face to face with Verendel and Annie, who are in the hallway. You see a servant <laughs> stepping out of a hidden door, opposite the hallway where you were. It's like we're not breaking into places. Mm. I'm fixing my hair in a mirror. The most <laughs> natural thing ever. <laughs> uh, Silas will just say, "Hi, Verendel. Hey, Annie." And Verandell looks rather confused. 
Move to the side so Sable can come in. It's rather personal for a servant. And Sable comes kind of afterwards. Oh, Silas uh, will, hi. Silas will drop his face for a moment and then put it back up. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, oh, that was, I didn't, that's really weird. Poor Varendel is a little bit confused. <laughs> so what are you guys up to other than causing chaos? Uh, sorry, that was a necessity. I was getting dragged to the butler. Um, Nothing much upstairs, but there's, according to Sable, the Baroness has a locked room here, and the Baron has a locked office elsewhere. I thought that would be the best But that's place none to of your concern, uh, Captain. You can have a great party now. As Sable seems somewhat <laughs> concerned about secrets, the secrets being spilled in front of the guard captain, or the, the town guard captain. Pretty sure we talk to him about it, even if she doesn't know. She doesn't know. Um, and yep. to her, uh, he's still the law. Mm -hmm. He still represents her parents, probably. Silas will say, it's okay. He's cool. <laughs> uh, wink, wink, smirk, smirk. Less people, in, the better. They've already spilled probably the most important secret to not spill. This is Silas getting very will, complicated. Uh, Silas will toss Annie the the wrapped up piece of leather with the tools in it and say, oh, look, a door. And move to the side to give her space. I see. So you've not been able to open this one. Well, I just got here. <laughs> no, it's... I've tried. It doesn't... Should we really be doing this here and now with him and still kind of looking at Varendel. It's all right. I know more of this than you might think. You do? That's not good either. I don't think this is a good idea. Is, do you know if there's a spell on this door, Sable? Oh, actually, is there a spell on this door? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, the, the door does have uh, a, uh, I guess it would be abjuration on the door. Um, yeah, there is a protection spell on the door. From down the hallway, you hear um, uh, Melora and Dudek talking quietly. Ah, there they are. And they walk back down. Sable looks mortified because more and more people are involved in this. And she's you feel you get this impression that it's sort of like, no, uh, going on through her head. Uh, you have your team. We have ours. No, we're all in the same team. We're a raid group. We take the village. Uh, Melora looks quite con quite concerned uh, and kind of speaking over Dudek's shoulder because she can she's taller than he is. Um, we found an uh, and she looks at Sable trying to figure out what to say or what not to say at this point. Um, we uh, there's another bad drink. I see a thing. Bad drinks? There's none behind these paint paintings, so. Uh, let's go. What, what do oh, you want I to do? I said there's... <laughs> well, Sorry. I'm going to guess that what happened to the... What, what, who was it again? Uh, ocean? To Ocean is what happens if you're too close to the, the pouch when it's touched. What what pouch? What are you talking about? We found some weird pouches that uh, stink a lot and make you very ill if you touch them. Do, what what? And make food go bad around them. What does that have to do with? I don't. What's going on? Trust me, kid. It, explain it. Okay. So how do you want us to approach it? You said it was it would explode if we got too close? Uh, it's some sort of 
abjuration magic protection. So. Oh, I, I'm not talking about the door. I'm talking about the couch that. Oh, sorry. Medric found. Um, Flip a bat's mind. Although, yeah. although it's understandable because there's sort of two or three things happening at once here. Dudek does kind of walk closer. Ah, probably the same as the other one. Somewhat alarmed, a little bit. Uh, well, can you describe what you're seeing? And if you relay to him, ah, probably a bit more than just an alarm then. It's really hard to pick. Meanwhile, Melora is kind of walking closer and kind of <laughs> always getting very crowded here. Uh, as she kind of uh, slips on through to talk to Annie specifically, whereas Verendel and Sable are kind of looking at each other a little bit suspiciously and also a little bit like deers and headlight or deer and headlights. Um, Medric is taking a look at the thing right now. I told him not to get too close, but is there anything we can do about it? I don't know. When, when it exploded, when I touched it, how, like, was it only, like, very close to me, or, like, did it look like the poof of stuff went further? It was kind of a, it was kind of like a, um, a poof outward. It would remind you kind of of those, those, uh, there's a certain kind of seed for a plant that mm -hmm. uh, it dries out and becomes hollow. And the moment mm -hmm. it's disturbed, all the insides go flying out to disperse the seeds. It's kind of like that, only even more elevated. And it's sort of a greenish, yellowish gas that got exposed for just an instant. Okay. So, like, did... Because I was standing, like, right here when it happened. How far did it look like it went? Like, did it cover the chair? Uh, yeah, pretty much most of the chairs would have gotten covered by that briefly. There's no okay, visible so effect on the furniture, but that's about how big it was, yeah. Okay. Kind of so, a five foot so radius. Like, yeah. Or yeah, five foot radius. Um, ten foot. Uh, is that, uh, Silas looks at Annie and says, um, how about we trade off? I'll go help Medric and you see if you can get through the door. And while um, this is going on, Medric is just like, you know, just waiting for people to come back and pretend like, I'm just pretending like I'm trying to read. It's like... Clearly they're all dead. Oh, wait, did we just discover that Medric can't read? No, I can, but it's like... You know, like when you... It's, or at least when I was a kid in high school, I, I had my book open, but I wasn't reading. I was just like doodling or something, but it's like... I, Medric has a book open, <laughs> but he's not reading. <laughs> it's okay. upside he's down. He's just trying he's... to like act inconspicuous in, in, in because he's just like idling in the library and, and doesn't want to look sketchy. From the perspective you can see looking out into the center foyer, you can see that uh, yellow laced uh, uh, wearing uh, woman has been talking to Angus, who kind of has been stomping around angrily most of the evening. Uh, and then she kind of uh, leans in, gives him a little peck on the cheek, and then kind of walks away with her chin lightly, or her fingers lightly under his chin. And she kind of, he kind of looks after her uh, with this sort of loving expression, weirdly enough, uh, as you see uh, that uh, that woman saunter off towards, hmm, probably towards the north in this case. And Angus kind of stomping off a little bit as well. Just Would she actually try to color. hit on the Baron with a Baroness standing right there? I mean, some people are bold. <laughs> um, so, where are you all going now? <laughs> well, Silas just suggested that, hey, why doesn't Annie pick the lock and uh, he'll go help Medric with the, the thingy? Yeah. Uh, I'll I'll tell Silas what happened uh, and around how much room it it took and just be very careful. Oh, that sounds neat. Uh, it was gross. Don't, don't it? It was gross. Not neat. <laughs> sure, I can understand that. Okay. Sable's gonna, Sable's gonna go with Silas because she wants to see what this thing is and who would dare put such a terrible stinky thing in my home 
It's kind of. Are you sure it's not your people trying to disrupt the party? We don't do that. Okay. And don't say so. I not allowed. <laughs> um. So I have advantage because of the tools that I have. Uh, Dudek will stand uh. beside you. Um, I have a few more uh, chances to do suppress these sorts of alarms but i don't have a lot left okay if we leave if we prop the door open will you have to cast it again uh, it depends on the particular spell but probably not just don't take too much time okay uh and i'll have you base uh i'll try to, to unlock the door and i'll have the others Keep watch, make sure nobody sees me doing so. Oof, 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 oof. That's a natural 19, so that means 30. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just a second. I got up here. Hey, you. A couple of things. Um, um, almost max. So close. This is why Silas figured, let her do the lockpicky thing, and Silas will do the Arcana thing. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, just a second. Um, so yes, Dudek does do the uh, twist as well to presumably do something about the magical mm -hmm. lock or a magical alarm. Melora kind of goes back down the hallway to kind of watch. Actually, no, she's going to go with you, uh, Silas, because her... Her date is in trouble. Uh, Verendel will go down and kind of engage just to make sure no one's... He's blocking, basically, at the moment. Make sure that the closest people weren't bothering you. Mm -hmm. uh, although you can see the white swan at the far end. Dudek is kind of trying to cover for you as well. He's going to move you guys over there. Just to get them out of the... Out of the range. Go, go, team. All right. And you open up that door. Oh, okay. It's just regular darkness. Slowly getting used to the different kinds of darkness. That was not the right button. I say I'm getting used to it, and then I immediately do it wrong. There we go. Um, as you open up the door, the first thing that strikes you is just green. A very thick, plush green carpet expands, uh, runs the entire surface of the room. A few uh, wooden chests uh, sit on either side, as well as a rather large one in the corner. The center of the room is dominated by uh, what look like very large, very overstuffed pillows. No other furniture that you can see. Uh, aside from a small brazier in the center of the room. However, as you enter, um, a uh, raven perched on the edge of this, uh, this uh, box, this, uh, this chest in the corner, um, kind of squawks uh, at, your, uh, at your entrance or at the door opening and then flies over to the other side to peer at you with intelligent eyes, but ravens are kind of like that. Um, you do also recall that the raven is the uh, patron, if you will, the patron bird of the baron of the barony. And it flies towards you. Kind of lands, quickly stops. shut the door. <laughs> okay. What? What is it? There's something in there. Oh, who? It was an intelligent bird. I, and then I am going to scurry off. <laughs> okay. Dudek sort of standing I'm above. not messing with a bird. Intel intelligent. <laughs> what did you mean, bird? And Dudek's going to take a closer look. It's not locked anymore, so he'll just try it open. Is there a bird in here that's flown in? And when the door gets to be about a foot wide open, 
flying uh -oh. out through the doorway is the the crow. Kind of flaps a little bit around uh, Dudek's head and kind of instinctively puts his hands up and then flies off elsewhere. Well, uh, move along. Nothing to see here. And probably as you're going towards the other side of the room, um, Silas, Sable, and Melora, all three of you <coughs> notice this this rather large uh, crow, which is cawing kind of constantly, flying through the center of the of the of the foyer. Flo flies a little bit around Angus, who kind of swings swings at it, uh, but misses because Angus isn't exactly in the state right now to hit anything. <laughs> and flies into somewhere farther north. That was strange. Another kind of alarm, perhaps. We won't have much time if you're going to take a look around. Annie, are you looking around? <laughs> uh, I'll tell them to uh, to keep watch here, and uh, I'll go in and take a very quick walk, a uh, quick look around. Okay. Uh, so Dudek kind of walks over. Uh, he walk. He'll walk up and engage Angus just to kind of keep him at bay. Uh, and very mm -hmm. dull. You can see kind of disappear on the corner, probably for the same that are there. It does leave you a little mm -hmm. bit vulnerable if anybody else is coming. In fact, the the white swan lady is kind of walking a little bit in that direction. Uh, and mm -hmm. you poke your head in. I'm going to literally just look quick, get a quick glance around the room to see if anything looks to not belong. Okay. Do you step into the there room? There was a raven. Now inside? it's gone. No, I'm going to, with everything going on, I'm taking a quick glance around the room, closing the door and walking away from the door. Okay. Um, there isn't any light in that room. The only light would have been some slight moonlight from the double windows on the opposite side. Uh, and from a quick look, aside to the fact that everything of this room is weird, um, mm -hmm. it's hard to pick out any particular thing. Um, it's weird that there's a bunch of pillows in the center around a brazier. This was described as the Baroness's sitting room. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like a sitting room at all. Um, there are those those uh, large chests in there. They look like large chests. It's hard to tell at a distance what they might contain unless you open them up. Um, make a make a perception check, real quick. That is a natural twenty. Hey. Nice, nice. So twenty one. There's two other things. Then you'll notice right away. Mm -hmm. uh, one, as the air flows out a little bit, it's scented very, very heavily. It's a bitter smell that's uh, that's coming from in, in there, uh, almost as though uh, something had been burned uh, in there. Maybe incense, something like that. Uh, and the other is that that thick green uh, carpet that you saw across the floor is not a carpet. It is, in fact, thickly leaved plants that seem to be growing in the floor. And you can see, kind of glinting on one of them, uh, a little bit of what looks like moisture. And it looks like it would have been a pretty messy step. Yep, and I will close the door. Did you just go on mute? Because you... I have to say close the door. She got really silent. I will, I will close the door and then I will quickly go towards uh, Varendale and just hook arms with him. And he kind of sees you and, and hooking arms and and uh, introduces you, actually, to Emma Doyle, who's wearing the eagle outfit. He knows everybody mm -hmm. in town. Uh, and then she's been talking to Caden Cook. Um you're familiar with, yeah, sorry, i got to talk to Verendel. You're familiar with my chief assistant, Annie. Um, this is um, Emma Doyle. She's with the, she pretty much runs the shipwrights uh, downtown. Every ship comes nice in. Nice to meet you. Every ship that comes in is under her uh, purview to get fixed. Thank you. Thank you very much. And the peacock there is Mr. Cook, Caden Cook. 
and he kind of walks, steps forward. Um, I think Medrick had seen Caden before. He's a very smooth operator. He steps forward and kind of uh, uh, gently takes your hand. Nice to meet you. Um, dressed very, very well. You can see the sort of golden blonde hair underneath his mask. Uh, underneath this massive feathered peacock mask, which is as much ostentatious as it is obnoxious. Um, if, uh, are you feeling, uh, sorry, got to speak to Varendel. I was just thinking that I was a little parched. You care to go for something to drink, Annie? And he kind of gives you that. That sounds like a good mask. idea. Let's go talk somewhere. What the hell? And, uh, uh, Emma looks like she wants to go with you. It's like, nope, third wheel, stay back. <laughs> um, I'll like shoot daggers out of my eyes. It's like, <laughs> it's the literal power no. she has just to shoot daggers out of her eyes. Um, pew, pew. At, at Emma? If, if she, she's going to try to follow us, I'm like, okay. Or just say, we'll be make right an back. intimidation roll because we'll I really think it would be hilarious to make an intimidation roll right now. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah, she stays back. Um, maybe another time. <laughs> maybe we should go dance, says Caden. Maybe. My man, back off. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was kind of figuring. That 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 seems like the most fitting way to not cause suspicion. And as you kind of move along, Varendel's like, "Wow, I've never seen anybody give me that look before." So. I guess that's good. Pretty much. <laughs> um, and I will uh, basically bring him to the dining room because we know that there's things that are not being manipulated and the, okay. the food tastes good in there again. Uh, you pass by the very uh, lovely white swan who kind of gracefully... Uh, moves out of your way. She she winks at Verendel as as you pass, uh, and Verendel kind of looks away, <laughs> trying not to catch eye, eye contact, <laughs> feeling that he doesn't want to start an international uh, incident at this point. Um, and as you enter in, there's actually a few other people that are in there. Uh, the dwarf um, wearing the ram mask is in there talking to the gull. Um, wait. I think you met before. That's Gwen. And the wooden goose you definitely have met before. That's Cilia. And they're all kind of chatting. It looks like the food has been ref refreshed. The, the room has been has been renewed. And in the classic uh, way of great servants, if you will, uh, no sign of them whatsoever. And no sign that they were ever there or no sign there was ever trouble. Um, there's not even a, a whiff of that odor, and you notice that there's a candle, a scented candle burning on one, on one side of the room, probably to take off that last edge of the, uh, of the smell. So, um, and he'll kind of usher you into one corner to talk, so you can talk quietly without being heard by anybody else. I'll say the wooden goose mm -hmm. has gone off to talk to the ram. That sounds so weird when I say it this way, but that's really how it goes. <laughs> Uh, no, she's wandered out in the hallway. So, Raven Room had more surprises? The floor is some sort of plant, and there's only... It's, it, it looked like it would make sense for it to be a sitting room by the layout, but it's just pillows and chests in there, and the floor is not a floor. It's some sort of living plant. And there was a really bitter smell. That's... And a bird. Well, the, the bird he, he was there for, but yeah. Um, sorry, I just have a little bit of housekeeping to do at the moment. Uh, and so yeah, he he. Um, Oh, yeah, a servant comes in. 
Nope, nope, a servant doesn't come in. They're out in the open. Never mind. Um, actually, a servant does poke their head in as if looking for someone. Looks around the room. Uh, does not see who they th thought they were looking for. Just want to verify that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yep, doesn't see who they're looking for. And then heads off. So, okay. We've got a plant room with a bird. Yes. That is the... Ex I did not want to risk going into there. The, I feel like it would dirty my dress. Well, that, that would be a terrible shame. It's a beautiful dress and you wear it well. Um, but... Uh, and he seems a little lost in thought for a moment. Kind of maybe appreciating that a little bit too much. Um, from where you guys are over the other side of the room, you do see there's a flurry of uh, of uh, servants, just the sort of page uh, servants, kind of looking uh, around, speaking to a few people. Uh, you see them speak to Angus, who looks a little bit still forlornly after the tall blonde woman who was there before, and kind of shakes his head, looks kind of confused, and then follows the servant away. Um, let's see. Just gotta make sure I get my numbers right here. Uh, okay. Damn it. Okay. I'll probably do that as well. Um, while the two of you are talking about that, I'll move over to the other side of the room. Where uh, Silas has kind of come in. Medrick, you see um, an unfamiliar servant being escorted by Melora and Sable. Hey, Melora, welcome back. Uh, hey, Sable. Where's this thing? She says, and I'm sort of ignoring everything else in the room. I want to see it for myself. Hey, Mandrick, heard you had a freaky thing in here. Do I recognize Silas's voice? Yeah, because you can't change your voice, right? Unless you okay. actually do performance. Oh. So yeah, it's 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 <sighs> coming out of okay, a young... I thought you guys got caught by the servants or something. Anyway, it's under that table. Be careful. It can like splatter all over you and make you really sick. Uh, Silas, you might want to have a look at it first. Sable's kind of walking over to it and looking underneath the table. Um, Don't get too close. What is it? Silas is going to watch just in case she gets too close. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I saw one before, and it kind of exploded. With Silas. I wasn't able to make anything. Yeah, it stinks. I can tell you that it stinks. And if it if, if it explodes, it'll stink all over you. So don't. Who put it here? What's it doing here? What's it for? We don't know. And he said there was some kind of symbol that remained briefly after it exploded, but. I, the one I saw, I, w I wasn't able to catch a good enough look at it. Um, Silas, since you're paying attention to Sable, um, as she sort of uh, crouched down, uh, very unladylike, crouched down to pay attention to what's underneath there and kind of looking, uh, you do notice that she's grabbing onto her chest and seems to be holding on to where you saw that center of magic. Uh, yeah. And uh, wordlessly kind of mouthing a few words. Do I notice that? Um, make a perception check. Silas was specifically paying attention to her, but you might notice that when she's not really paying as much attention to your explanation. 17. Um, yeah, you see her kind of grabbing onto her, uh, kind of grabbing onto her chest, but that could also be a modesty thing. Mm -hmm. Especially from the odd angle. Um, does the tail end of, of, uh, Silas's detect magic see anything around the trap? Um, like the bundle? It gives off a strong necromantic energy, um, which I don't know if 
anybody had been able to describe. Well, I guess, Medrick, you had seen. Did you see this? Somebody saw this. Which one? Uh, uh, I did. No. I would have. I, I, no. I, I told him that there was a symbol, and my my Murray brain just remembered that it was in, uh, what was it, Abyssal? Yeah. Which I, I would have told him. Yeah. yeah, I remember that part. But I wasn't able, like, when I was, uh, like, after the one that Ocean had dealt with, I wasn't able to actually, like, get a good look at the symbol. Right. Because I rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> Sable will uh, straighten silence, up and back off a little bit. The uh, Silence will warn them to watch out. There's necromantic, uh, necromantic energy involved, which would make sense if it's rotting things. Um, does he see a symbol or just, just the uh, pouch? Um, from from there, unless you want to get closer, uh, all you see is the pouch. Okay. So if I notice Sable backing away, uh, so uh, what did you see? I don't know what it is. It wasn't any doing of a diamond. She kind of whispers, it's still quite uncertain and, you know, there's still well, a lot what? of ears around here. The diamond. Is he here tonight or? His presence is known. And actually, um, because you're talking to her, make an insight check. Oops, I just... Damn it, come on. Fuck. I'm just glad it's not only me. I accidentally clicked the thing above the dice, and now it's like all fucking... How do I unsnap to center? Uh, how do you... Sorry, you, what? You said insight check. Yes. Mm. 20 overall. Nice. Um, as she's talking to you and talking about the shadow, she's mm -hmm. actually looking beyond you. It's something behind you. Okay. But so now it could be a trick about, to get... being subtle about it, though. Silas is moving closer. Take a look. Actually, uh, what I'm I'm just gonna go as if I'm like scratching the back of my head, but reach behind me to see if there's anything there. Okay, uh, I think I think that's a sleight of hand roll. So that is trying to make that look natural. <laughs> sleight of hand. That's a plus zero. Fifteen total. 15. Wow. Okay, so it's not terrible. I got all my shit rolls early, like out of the way at the beginning. Yeah, Melora kind of ducks a little bit as you kind of swing by her space with your arm, but... Uh, I'd be making sure, like, I wasn't swinging at her. Yeah. Um, yeah, you don't contact anything from behind okay. you that way. But, yeah. Do you work for the diamond? With the diamond? You know what? I don't even know what to think of the diamond anymore. At first, he was a bad guy. We had a words and also blows and um you already know i, I think i did pick up this bobble and i'll pull that bobble out of my pocket that uh because I, I think I, I carried two of them from uh people who got killed in that temple okay you pull it out yeah i'll show it to her because i mean she probably has one too if she was holding her chest then like you know, Where did you get those? And she looks a little bit more nervous now. We were ambushed in a temple, uh, and I'll just describe briefly that one adventure. Our patron, if she's even still alive, if uh, she Melora's seems to kind be of looking against... at you, she hasn't heard most of the story. You did what? A sunken temple near here? I didn't hear about that. It's not there anymore. Yeah, uh, we kind of... Well, it got flooded. We can discuss this later, but... Can I take a look at it? Yeah, Let's sure. I'll hand her one of the two. Okay. She looks at it. And again, kind of looks off beyond you. What's behind me? Don't worry about it. And she hands it back to you. There's nothing here. 
Can I do an insight check? <laughs> yeah. When when I say she, there's nothing here. She was kind of gesturing with the the thing itself, the little oh, bubble. Okay. But um, you can still do an insight I'll, check if you want to. If you don't trust that, I'll pass through the other one. Okay. What about that one? No, it's the same. It's all right. You can keep it. So silence, silence. approaches. Yep, he's going to. Uh, uh, where is this? Like, what? So there's is a, it under a table? Or? Yes, there's a yeah. very small end table, okay. and it, it's kind of attached underneath the end table. You can see that it's sort of attached to this yellowish greenish goo. Um, hmm. Well, he's going to uh, flip over to lie on his back on the ground, uh, every, taking his backpack off first, which nobody can see until he pulls it out of his uh, his illusion. Um, and he's going to slide under it like a uh, bomb tech going underneath a car with a bomb. Um, <laughs> okay. A and servant take a pops look his head up, in the door and kind of looks around the room. Kind of looks from person to person as if sort of sizing up the kind of mask they're wearing. And then kind of quickly pops out again. Um... Yeah, Silas, uh, without touching it, just is going to take a closer look at it to see if he can find out anything further. Um, okay, how close is he... a closer look? Well, he sticks his head under the table, so it's probably a few feet away. Okay. Um, it From where you're seeing it, it looks like a sort of crude leather bag that's been tied with a, a leather thong. Uh, it has just been attached to the bottom of this. You can start to... Silas, the table mechanic. That's right. I have to insert more opportunities to, to uh, be mechanic under a table. Um, there's no markings on the outside of the, of the, the uh, leather pouch. The leather seems to be pretty primitive from what you can see. It's not well-shaped. It's not really even all that well-made. Um, the goo um, gives off a very... Uh, uh, bitter acidic uh, smell to it and you kind of feel your nose start to wrinkle even getting this close to it hmm and if it affects Silas it's got to be really bad um, why would they put this in the library so we found you found one in the northern main room one in one of the toilets and one here it's probably in that there because they couldn't get in there and table point to the door at the far end of the room. That's Sorry. one guy. Uh, they probably put it in here because they couldn't get in there. That's my father's office over there. Huh. Is she pointing to the room north of here? Yep. Okay. And there's a, a doorway right here. Okay, so Silas is just thinking this uh, or so thinking out loud as he lays it out, but it's like there's one here in this room. Uh, he'll ask which toilet it was, which I think was this one. Yeah, I think so. Technically the hmm. south toilet. I mean, maybe they're, maybe it's built around the office because they couldn't get into it. I don't know. Maybe they're just putting them in random spots. I mean, all they seem to do is cause inconvenience. It made somebody really sick earlier. Yeah, but then all, then everything disappeared. Although maybe the sickness would have stayed. Hmm. I mean, they're not easy spots to reach, really. Uh. Hmm. Well. Hmm. Yeah, if he can't see anything, I, I, does he see a symbol here now that he's up close to it? Nope. Okay. Well. The symbols uh, only appeared after they were disturbed. Yeah, okay. Well. Uh, hey, if you disturb it, uh, brace yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm thinking uh, if we just nail it from a distance 
that'll probably disrupt it and set it off. Um, as long as we're not close enough to be affected, we should be fine if, if it all disappears afterwards. All right. Um, you have my bag of holding. There would be darts from Azumunta's thorns in there. Um, sure. Um, or at least regular darts. Yeah. Uh, I think, actually, Silas has a spell, but he can only do it with, uh, I think he can only do it with stones. No, five small non-magical objects. Um, no, he doesn't want to waste one of Annie's darts. He'll just grab something from in the room uh, and enchant it with magic stone. Okay. Uh, there are some leftover drinks that are here that haven't been cleared away yet, and uh, a small uh, plate of uh, cheese and meats. Throw cheese sure. out. <laughs> Definitely yeah. cheese. Yeah, he'll 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 throw a volatile piece of cheese. <laughs> All right. Uh, I mean, Medric would throw a drink, but though um, it might turn it into a Molotov cocktail, which is not what we want. It's like, yeah, sorry, what, man, we burnt in your place. Yeah. Now he's going to advise everyone else to get out of the room just in case, because he doesn't know how big it'll it'll hit. Um, I think both and Sable gonna, and, Ma and Melora are going to back up a bit, but they want to see this. <laughs> they want to see. What yeah, Medric also on. wants to see this. Well, this point where he can laying down on the ground he can still see it so he can throw from there uh it's a pretty a magic small stone. low slung table so it's it's not that high up yeah so you can shuffle some of the furniture out of the way yep yeah he'll move stuff out of the way and basically it's the attack uses his spell casting uh attribute so it basically just magic sends it but um and then, yeah, he'll uh, try and hit the bag with. Uh, so, well, he'll actually enchant a number of them because he can enchant up to five, I think. So where where is Silas going to try to do this from? As far away as possible. Um, okay. Like, if I he mean, moves the like, where in the room is the table? Right here in the corner. Okay, then he'll move the furniture out of the middle of the room and try it from like this corner. So about 15 feet away. So right there, okay. <clears throat> Everybody else might want to also move back. He warned them. <laughs> uh, no, okay. Sable wants to see what, what it is, and so does Mo. Both curious yep. about this. But I mean, like, move back as far as possible, so Melora can go, like, one more square up. All right, all right. Okay. <laughs> So, I, I don't like want. I don't. I, I don't want Cartwright mad at me. You get a fifteen to hit it for nine bludgeoning damage. Okay, which might blow apart the the table. Hopefully not. We can just blame uh, passing drunks. So, what was it you actually threw? What was the thing you 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 powered? Piece of cheese. Piece of cheese. <laughs> Magically imbued piece of cheese. Most powerful piece of cheese. Causing ever. a stink bomb. <laughs> he is Gambit right now. All right. So he's just laying on the floor. Gambit. like a, He's just a nerd laying on the floor version of Gambit. So you charge up this, this piece of cheese. Such a weird spell when you think about it. Uh, I, I wonder if it's meant to be something hard. I don't know. I threw cheese in the room. I'm, I'm as responsible for this as anyone. Uh, you charge up the piece of cheese and you basically huck it. <laughs> <laughs> at the table it's really hard yep. to do because the table's really really low so you're kind of having to almost be on on knees to actually huck that low um and oh, yeah, from, he's, he's probably lying on his back uh, well i would have made a disadvantage if he's lying on his back because that's really hard to throw anything at that point well, let's just say it was a baby bell kind of cheese and it's like it's got but, like really really good like aerodynamics even a disadvantage that's a 15 his other role was higher <laughs> nice uh, as you kind of lob this at the table and uh, there's that moment of piece of cheese glowing slightly, flying through the air, not going to hit it because it's at a, at, a, at a weird angle because it's going to have a little bit of an arc. And yet it does kind of go underneath and tag the sack. That sounds wrong. Uh, <laughs> tag, tag. With that. And there's a little, there's a little explosion of energy. Now, what kind of damage does uh, Magic Stone Force. do? Force damage? Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah, it's just... Pure magical damage. So when it when it contacts the bag, two things happen at once. 
One, the bag itself seems to almost implode from the impact, even the slightest impact, the, fur, the, the first edge of the cheese, if you will, uh, kind of comes in contact and it was primed for any contact whatsoever. Uh, so that's the first thing. And it kind of dissolves, letting forth what looked like, because you are, you're paying a lot more attention to it right now, um, yeah. what looked like small seeds of sort of greenish uh, yellow in the inside, which sort of posh, uh, paw, fall out of the bag and then explode. And then the explosion of the cheese itself forces it out to fill the room. So I'd like everybody to make constitution saving throws. Shit. As you are hit with the magical essence of this. And we'll make one for, for uh, Sable and Melora. Sable actually has Yay, a sheet. Uh, let's see. 17. 17. 16. 16. Uh, let's see. Plus uh, one for Sable. It's a really long time to roll. Oh, that's pretty good. And plus two for... Uh, and a six for uh, Melora. As this stuff spreads out through the room. And all of you are left gasping and coughing for the moment anyway. As this sort of acrid, almost... It's like a combination of smoke and slime uh, goes, goes through the air. Who got a 16 or better? Me. So Nax got a 16 or better. Uh, Silas. Silas as well. So the two of you feel it and kind of feel something trying to invade for a moment uh, and then kind of uh, uh, subside. Um, Sable um, similarly seems to, to, to hunker down for a moment and then starts scratching away at her arms. Ah, it burns. It burns. And uh, Melora is just floored by this, instantly out. Uh, and you see, uh, right standing right next to her, uh, Medric, you see Melora's covered in boils that are, are, are bursting, uh, with uh, green yellow fluid. Uh, you can so see the same breathing thing is ocean. shallower. It's, it's like what ocean had only worse. Um, okay. What Sable is experiencing is what, uh, what looks more like what ocean experienced, which is she's coughing and gagging. She's still, uh, standing. But she seems kind of weak and wavering at the moment, as well as uh, these these pustules are bursting out over her body. Um, her okay, skin so gets, gets more a... sallow. So what happens? Laura's going to get a level three uh, lesser restoration. Okay. Does lesser restoration doesn't does it require any components to use that? Just I don't mind. think so. I'm pretty sure it's verbal slash somatic or something. I can double check though. Yeah. While uh, Medrick is doing that, Silas is going to quickly get up and pull uh, Sable out of the room. Uh, you are correct, uh, Medrick. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, okay, it does. Uh, I was kind of curious about that. Uh, so, um, Silas is going to pull uh, Sable out of the room. She's coughing. She's not really resisting, but she's she's uh, kind of disoriented at the moment. Um once the once the flash of flame flows over Melora's body, it burns away all the pustules and all of the, the, the residue. She's still unconscious, but she doesn't seem to be retching or, or, or she seems to be breathing normally. Um, Sable, on the other hand, is, is uh, really rough off. Uh, Silas, I'll have you make a constitution saving throw again. Still magic? Oh no. Seven. As you feel where your hand came in contact with her arm, that stuff seems to seep up over you and uh, start to quickly engulf your arm. Uh, make a, a, uh, a death saving throw. Shit. No. You drop unconscious. Okay. Medrick, you see Silas drag Sable out of the room and then suddenly fall over. Uh, does your disguise require concentration? Uh, no. Okay. I'll so pick up Melora and drag her out of the room. Okay. She's still unconscious, but she is not yeah. breathing badly. So she's going to go like uh, back in this hallway? Dudek kind of comes over and is striding up to both of you. Um, hmm. Okay. 
you see that uh, Sable is doing badly. Silas is unconscious on the ground. Okay. And the boils are rapidly covering over. Actually, no. There's no visible evidence that anything's going wrong. On uh, Sable? On Silas. Okay. There's just this uh, can, unconscious can servant on the ground. Okay. Can you move Melora to the uh, hallway oh, sure. <laughs> so we don't forget about her? Yep. <laughs> All right, lesser restoration level two on Sable. Okay. God damn it, I fucking told him not to do that. <laughs> All right, so is, that, is Sable okay? Told him to back up. Uh, lesser restoration, yes. Yeah, Sable does seem okay. to be okay. There's deep, right. there's deep bags under her eyes, though, and she does look at it you know, very tired. Expression. What happened? He, he just dropped dead. What? I don't, there was that stuff and it was all over me and he was pulling me out of the room and then he just sort of fell over. Yeah, uh, the boils and all that junk, is it contagious? Or... Who are As you in, if I touch him, am I in danger? Who are you asking? Because Sable does uh, not really seem Sable. like she's really with it Silas at the moment. Silas is the only one that knows. <laughs> and yeah. Silas is... Disguised, so we can't see anything. You don't see anything wrong with him. You just see a, a, an unconscious servant on the floor. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it's only a matter of time until somebody like comes walking by. So In fact, I will, uh, let... Dudok is the Dudok, one. Dudok, don't touch him. What? What seems to be going? <laughs> what happens? Who is this one? Lesser restoration level three on Silas. Okay. As or on you the reach, unseen sir. as you reach in and your hand kind of pierces the illusion, you can feel the sort of squirming surface of his skin gross um but the lesser restoration does restore uh does remove the disease uh you still have one level of exhaustion silas hey uh and you're still unconscious technically until someone wakes you up silas we'll just push him a little bit ah. yeah he wakes up easily. watch out it's contagious <laughs> really did you find it did you okay now we know it? for next time what uh, Dudek is kind of trying to figure out what the hell's going on and kind of looks over. Oh, that's disgusting. And you can see now that the room is kind of covered in uh, mold and mildew and it kind of smells a little bit. Whatever that effect was got dispersed to the entire room. Okay, let's close the door and uh, should we warn the Baron about this? I'll look at uh, Silas. Who could be this doing time this? It did- this time it didn't disappear. Who's doing this? We, we don't know. We're trying to find out. And you see her kind Despite of... Despite our disagreements her... with, the diamond, with the diamond before, I, I'm pretty sure we're on the same side now. You see her grasp onto her, her chest and kind of hold on and, and kind of... Seems like she's muttering a few words. Oh, this changes things. I don't know if that's for the better. And outside, you can hear the rumbling of thunder and lightning as a massive storm seems to have suddenly spiked up. Uh, it's 20 to 6. I don't think we can get into a ma- another major scene at the moment. Is there any last-minute things you want to do in this particular scene before we wrap up for the night? Yes. I'll wake up Melora. I'll wake up Melora. <laughs> okay. Melora seems uh, similarly uh, tired, but otherwise not affected, similar to Sable and to uh, Silas at this point. Uh, Silas, excuse me. Silas is going to use a dose of Oryx balm to get rid of his exhaustion. Okay. Uh, how do you apply it? How do you see yourself applying this Oryx balm to? Uh... <laughs> He's like, mm. it's like Vic's vapor rub. You gotta rub it underneath the nose and a little on the chest and. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so it perks you up in the morning. <laughs> he probably rubs it on his chest. Okay, so a hand kind of goes in and he'll open it. Yeah, he'll open his shirt and rub it on his chest like a Vicks vapor rub. We are not uh, sponsored by Vicks vapor rub, but if they wanted to throw a dollar to us, I don't think we'd mind. And then he's going to use his Druidcraft cantrip to get rid of that stink. Okay, it's still lingering in the room, but at least for yeah, you yeah. it now it doesn't doesn't linger quite as much. Well, I mean the stink of the oryx. Uh... Oh, the oryx bomb. Yeah, that's true. That yeah. stuff does have a pretty rough, rough scent to it. 
Um, and actually, uh, uh, Melora will step out and she'll kind of close the door behind her. So that's going to dissipate eventually and uh, we're going to have to try to go into your dad's office. Look, I say as I'm looking at Sable. Maybe. See, as far as I recall, the other ones never exploded that spectacularly. Is there another entrance to your dad's office? Silas will say as he pulls out his book and starts to write a note to Annie. Not that I'm aware of. I've never found one. Uh, the note to Annie will say... Uh... Uh... Bum number three exploded, did not wear off. Um, it's more dangerous than expected. Um, I think what else? Uh, yeah. Um, Really, really, really avoid if possible. Medrick looks really tired. My response is yet the will lesser be... rest to everybody. <laughs> my, my response will be something along the lines of uh, open door, Raven flew out, floor covered in live sentient plants looking thing pillows and chests closed it and left <laughs> uh in dining room yes that goes 21 okay uh, i'll relay that to uh, medrick and the others uh sable do you know what you said your mother loves plants? Yeah. I don't know why she has a room of them, though. Hmm. Huh. The raven isn't actually all that strange. They're familiar? Well, it it's sort of the barony of the ravens. It's, it's a family mascot, really. It's been around for as long as I can remember. So a pet? I guess. It's smart, but I guess ravens are smart. I'll write another message to Annie. Um, Raven is intelligent. Maybe it warned the Baroness. That'll That's be what, it. yeah. That's what I thought. Uh, the ground seemed dangerous. The, the, the floor plant seemed dangerous. Um, kind of creeped out. Think we should regroup. Um, let see, where is... How broad is Annie's blind sight? Ten feet. Ten feet. Ten feet. You're in this this dining hall, which is fairly brightly lit. And out of the corner of your eye, you're getting the sense of movement. Just on the edge of your perception. Just off to your left, if you're facing back in towards the room. So here or here? Nope, there's there's a wall there, so somewhere over here. Okay. Somewhere over here where? That could No, it's not Like it's here. Not, it's not pinging. Oh wait, no. Hang on. Here, here. <laughs> I think I was on the wrong layer. There we go. Now it's pinging. Okay, there. Okay. okay. Um
Then let's write back uh, agreed. Um, we'll meet you in five. Uh, and then he'll say, Annie's at the dining room. Uh, she figures we should regroup. I think that's probably the right thing to do, but we got to make sure nobody goes into this room. Uh, I'll stay here and direct people elsewhere. I can just simply say that, um, I don't know, I'll make something up. Just tell them that another one of those another one of those things that affected ocean went off and it's still there as contagious as it is it could i mean it could wipe out a whole lot of people here and we don't know if it's deadly or not it seems we're pretty uh, deadly or at least very dangerous yeah my response will be come in through both doors invisible person in room And by now, uh, the, the, that sensation of something being in the room, it's passed beyond your your uh, your perception, but you got the impression that it moved from there, here, here, and that's when you lost it. Uh, Silas will look at Medrick and say, uh, um, Annie and Verandell are in the dining room. She says one of the invisible people's there. Uh, right. Let's go block the exits. All right. And you notice, and then, Annie, like, that the, the ram and the gull have left that room. Kind of seem to come to an end of a conversation. Yeah. Like Silas will run, uh, and he'll just flat out run, like up through the hallways over to the upper door and just kind of walk in and say, uh, uh, with his voice, uh, ma'am, sir, is there, uh, uh, can I get you any food? I'll act like a servant. Okay. I'm Alora. If you want to not take part in this because it's dangerous, I'll completely understand. I'm not running anywhere right now. I'll try to keep an eye out and see if there's any more things I can find. All right, Still thank you. a few you. places we haven't checked. Yeah, like uh, the office that Sable mentioned. Whatever you do, be careful. Just listen, try to gather information, but do not engage. Yeah, I'm not going in there anytime anything. soon. All right, catch you later. Boop. Right. And Sable's, Sable's going to stay there. Her curiosity at the moment seems to be either sated or her breath is too far out. Sable and Melora having a small conversation. And that's where we'll pick up next time as you surround the dining room, trying to figure out how to get the dining room to talk. <laughs> Actually, I might have something. The dastardly dining room to talk. Well, uh, you'll have two weeks to figure. <laughs> yeah, two weeks. <laughs> uh, yep. It's funny because I never know exactly where fe folks are going to go. So I have an entire whole other things planned. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if I ever get there. Um, but uh, a little bit of a mystery finding these things, finding out they can be quite dangerous, uh, finding out that they are there for some reason. Um, you didn't get a chance to see what, what residue might have been left behind like the other ones but were, but um, other than the cloud that's there. Mm. Uh, oh, did Silas see a... Uh, sorry, was, I think I asked this, but was there a symbol... From the angle, you couldn't see it. You were too far away. Okay. Um, but uh, we will return back to this strange mystery mansion and this this party of... of uh, it's probably a good, clever thing I'm not thinking of there, but a party of disaster, perhaps, uh, <laughs> that's going on. Despite everything that's going on, there's still a party going on as well with people drinking and having fun and chatting and, dis and discussing things. And we will return back to the party and our party in two weeks. Uh, thanks, folks, for, for playing. Uh, thanks for all going to the same level. <laughs> it was not intended. Thanks for running. I could have done it either way. I have, I have a plan. Um, but uh, 
hopefully this is a, a curious mystery and we'll get into some, some dangerous things next time as well. Uh, thanks uh, for those of you watching at home. You can always find out find all the previous episodes, all the previous adventures at youtube.com slash encaf1. Uh, look for the Legends of the Drowned Isles or the Campaign 2, The uh, Great Confusion, um, which was such a prescient title, I think, or it was an influence. Uh, and find us on Facebook. Look for Watchers of the Drowned Isles. If you want to chat, uh, we'll have the uh, summaries, I think, of episodes. will also go up there shortly, too. Well, sometime soon. Uh, if you want to tune in live, tune in on Sundays, uh, 3 o'clock Atlantic time, um, for our little game. Until then... Once again, thanks to my players, and thank you for paying attention and watching. And, uh, yeah, I don't have a catchy sign-off. We never did develop one, did we? I had to workshop that somewhere. There was one that was called, like, Don't Drown This Round. Let's say Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Don't don't die. Don't don't get diseased. No dying is good No death dying. by chocolate. Exactly. Or throw bunnies. I'm not really sure which. I was going to click a button, and a window popped up frame by button. I'll click it now. <laughs>